scripture speaks about that the dragon cast forth out of his mouth a flood to cause the woman to be carried away with every wind of doctrine, our job is to open up the ground and swallow up the flood. Because the scriptures makes it plain that we are at war. Do you brothers understand that? We have to face the reality of where we are. Once you come to that realization of what this is about, then you will begin to focus your energy and your mind and your spirit in getting out of this thing. It is the right thing for us as men, as the vanguards of God's truth, to make sure that this truth gets taught to our people. You're the real Jews, you're the Israelites, and Jerusalem is your homeland. These white people, these so your enemies, they know what this Bible is really talking about, and they are up nervous as hell that he sees you waking up. And it's driving his behind crazy. That's the devil trying to destroy you and trying to destroy the word of God. We will prove that the white man is the devil by the Bible and we dare anyone on the face of this globe to challenge that. And we're gonna do it tonight. Cause these heathens, they need a, need a wake up call. Some of them think we're stupid, we gotta school them. Educate you heathens on what we're about here. What we know here is some peace, warning shots for you. Stop talking about us. We're going to destroy you. Hey, Shalom. Yeah. Everybody doing good? We're going to do better tonight. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> Today's topic is called Israelites Will Never Be Debunked Warning Shots. <laughs> These heathens have a habit of underestimating niggas. And the, they think we're just purple niggas up here with, with just, just, they just hate people, white people because they're white and just push black supremacy, which are all non-existent. And they're not white. So we're just going to just get around that. I'm going to deal with that in the conclusion of the class, though. Um, these are, they call themselves reform apologetics. I call, them, I call them unreformed pathetics. They don't know the Bible. They don't know history. They don't know a damn thing. If they do know, they ain't going to teach it to you. Like Deacon Yasser was bringing out earlier tonight. <sighs> Try to stay calm. Let's get Ezra 4, Ezra chapter 4, verse 1. Because, again, the, they've spent 400 years lying to us. And for 400 years, those years of, of slavery and mental anguish and psychological warfare they've performed against us, we're supposed to just sit back and just accept the lies and foolishness that we hear from these, these uh, heathens. These pathetics. So... We're going to do it. Now, the elder did a video called The Israelites Will Never Be Debunked. I made a statement and ended up on a thumbnail. I don't, I don't understand. I say two words, I get put on thumbnails. I don't get it. They don't like me. They don't like me, right. I'm, I'm disliked well, heavily. I don't like any of right. But the point is, is that all we did was respond saying that we ain't going to be debunked. And that, for me, we got an immediate response from that. So we just started to do our own response. You want to do it? It's a two hour documentary calling us throughout the whole video fake black Hebrew Israelites. Fake black, which is amazing to me because they white man fakes everything. He's the, he's the last of the Mohicans. He's Geronimo. He's the last nigga on earth. The last samurai. The Mexican. Prince of Persia. <laughs> Prince of Egypt. Prince of the blacks. It's insane. Give you type in nigga in Google, white man pop up. The hell is this? You're right. Give him a couple of couple more years and he'll say Dr. Martin Luther King was a white man. Yeah. Malcolm X too. So with all of that being said, let's get Ezra 4 verse 1. The book of Ezra, chapter 4 and verse 1. Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity builded the temple unto the Lord God of Israel. Now, so at this point, this is Ezra reflecting on the... Um, Affliction that Zerubbabel and Joshua went through when trying to rebuild the temple that the Babylonians, along with the Edomites, destroyed. This is during the reconstruction period of our forefathers. So Ezra's, Ezra's reflecting back because during his time, him and Nehemiah faced the same opposition. So he's reflecting back on what happened with Zerubbabel 
and Joshua when they were trying to build the temple. Because during Ezra and Nehemiah's time, they were trying to rebuild the walls and the houses that the Babylonians and Edomites helped to burn. All right? Go ahead. Verse 2. Then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, Let us build with you, for we seek your God. So you had these heathens that said, Listen, let us build the temple with you, for we seek your God just like you. We're good Christians just like you. This modern terminology. We believe in God just like you. We believe in the Bible just like you. Ain't that what they say? Go ahead. For we seek your God as ye do. And we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Asarhaddon, king of Asor, which brought us up hither. Now what happened was, during the split of Israel, the Assyrians came against the northern kingdom. They had 12 tribes. They broke into, into two groups. You had southern kingdom or northern kingdom. Southern was the three, and the northern kingdom was the nine, above, north. We were south, they were above. Assyria, con Assyria conquered the northern region. And remember, Judah and, and Ephraim shared land. So when they removed and deported Ephraim out the land, they put heathens in the lands that we shared with Ephraim and in Ephraim's land as well. That's where these heathens came from. So Ephraim was deported out their land, and the heathen, the Syrian king, put heathens in their, in their place. So they said, we've been here since, we've been here for a long time. We serve a God like you. Go ahead. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, ye have nothing to do with us. Stop. You hear what they said again? Ye have nothing to do with us. You hear what our forefathers said to the heathens? We have nothing to do with you. That's why they keep saying we hate white folks who are racist. Listen, I don't hate white people personally. I don't care about you. We don't care about you other nations at all. We're not in this truth for you. We're in this truth for our people. You're, you're insignificant. It's like an ant in the grass. You walk in the grass, you don't go, oh, an ant, oh, no. We don't care about you. That's your level of, of, of acknowledgement we have for you and other nations. You have your people, we have ours. That's it. It's about racist and hating. I'm going to do it that later on because that's the card they're using now. We're racist and we're prejudiced. I'm going to do it that terminology later on. But again, our forefathers understood it wasn't about the other nations. We didn't need them. We don't need you. And the same thing stands for us today. Go ahead. You have nothing to do with us to build a house unto our God. Unto our God. Possessive word. Our God. Not yours. Not everyone's. Our God. Go ahead. But we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel. Hear that? We ourselves together will build unto our Lord, our God. Not you with us. We don't want you with us. It's ain't about you. Go ahead. As King Cyrus, the king of Persia, hath commanded us. Go ahead. Then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah. The people Judah. of the land are the heathen's ad ad adversaries back in verse 1. They got mad. We, we rejected them. We dismissed them, like we've done multiple times, taking y'all stop. Now they're mad and do a two-hour documentary on us. That's the rebuttal. That's what they do. They get mad. When you exclude, especially Esau, when you exclude him, he loses his mind. Because he, he expects the Negro and his man to embrace him as a father, as a god. So when he sees us saying, you ain't no god, you ain't no messiah, they get angry. Yeah. Now you're a cult. Now you're crazy. Now you're violent. Now you're black supremacist. Now you're a racist. When you reject them. Because this Bible don't belong to them. We don't need them to come to this Bible. Continue. Then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building. And troubled them by putting up nonsensical videos about them. Troubled them in building, trying to deter people away from the truth. Make us look bad, defame us. Character assassination as he's been doing. That's their specialty. Go ahead. And hired counselors against them. To frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia. Because you have heathens that have more money. They would help. They would assist in production videos to make against us. They can't afford it. We got you. You need software. You need this. You need that. You need cameras. We got that. To frustrate the purpose of, the, of this truth being pushed out there. To hide it in the dirt like that story you read earlier. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Go ahead. Even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Two years. Go ahead. And in the reign of Ahasuerus... In the beginning of his reign, wrote they unto him an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. And in the days of Artaxerxes, wrote Bishlam, Mithradath, Tabil, and the rest of their companions unto Artaxerxes, king of Persia. And the writing of the letter was written in the Syrian tongue and interpreted in the Syrian tongue. 
Rahum, the, the chancellor, and, Sh and Shimshai, the scribe, wrote a letter against Jerusalem to Artaxerxes, the king, in this sort. So they reported us. Go ahead. Then wrote Rahum, the, the, the chancellor, and Shimshai, the scribe, and the rest of their companions, the Danites, the Ap Ap Afarsath, yeah, far, uh, whatever. Far the Arphashites, mm -hmm. the Tarpalites, the, the Arphasites, the Archivites, mm -hmm. the Babylonians, the Shushanites, the Shushans, the Shushans, Susankites, the whatever. Susankites, and the Dahavites, and the Elamites. These are all the heathens that were placed in our land of Ephraim by the Assyrians. He put all these heathen foreigners in our land that Ephraim once inhabited, that, that were neighboring, to, neighboring Judah. Go ahead. And the rest of the nations whom the great and noble Asnapar Asnapper is Asnapper Ash Asnapper is Asher Benapal. Asher Bernapal. That's another king. Go ahead. He was um a Saradan's son. You read about back in chapter two, verse two. That's his son. This king continued doing the same thing. Go and, ahead. And the rest of the nations whom the great and noble Asnapper brought over and set in the cities of Samaria, and the rest that are on this side the river. And at such a time. He set these heathens in the city of Samaria. That was Ephraim's capital. Our capital was Judea or Judah. Their capital was Samaria. You understand? Northern kingdom had Samaria. Judah had Jerusalem or Judah, Judea. All right? Go ahead. This is the copy of the letter that they sent unto him, even unto Artaxerxes the king. Thy servants, the men on this side, the river, and at such a time. Go ahead. Be it known unto the king that the Jews which came up from thee to us are come unto Jerusalem building the rebellious and the bad city, and have set up the walls thereof, and joined the foundations. Set up the rebellious and bad city. This is called the slander campaign, smear campaign. This is what they're doing to keep us from building the temple. Go ahead. Be it known now unto the king that if this city be builded and the walls set up again, then will they not pay toll, tribute, and custom, and so thou shalt endamage the revenue of the king. That these guys built this temple, they're going to turn against you. There's going to be treason going on. Slam, slander. Same thing like um, Delhi Devotions, um, the, the occult group, Black Hebrew Israelites, all our background information. Watch, you're going to see it. Watch this. You're going to see it. Now, because we have maintenance from the king's palace, and it was not meet for us to see the king's dishonor, therefore have we sent and certified the king that search may be made in the book of the records of thy fathers. Stop. Check out the books that your fathers wrote about them, because the, the Persian kings would document events that occurred and events of other nations that they conquered themselves. He goes, check the records regarding these people from your, but your forefathers had documented. Watch this. So shalt thou find in the book of the records and know that this city is a rebellious city and hurtful unto kings and provinces, and that they have moved sedition within the same of old time. For which cause was this city destroyed? Because the reason why Babylon came against Judah is because of the fact that the kings like Zedekiah, Jachin, Jachim, his father, they rebelled against the Babylonians. Jer the prophets told them, listen, subject yourself to Babylon, you'll be all right. These kings are like, hell no. So they formed, they would ally themselves with the Egyptians or other nations and get overthrown. Ephraim did the same thing, got overthrown. So he's giving them the bad apples of Israel, the bad kings of Israel. That, so that's why he's, he's using the evil of Israel's actions to defame them entirely as a nation. You understand? So you're going to have heathens that will put up videos of evil camps that make the whole movement look bad. That's what they're doing now. You understand? All right. Let's get, um, read on, verse 16. We certify the king that if this city be builded again and the walls thereof set up, by this means thou shalt have no portion on this side the river. Go ahead. Then sent the king in answer unto Rahum, the, can the chancellor, and to Shimshai, the scribe, and to the rest of their companions that dwell in Samaria, and unto the rest beyond the river, peace and at such a time. The letter which he sent unto us hath been plainly read before me, mm -hmm. and I commanded, and search hath been made, and it is found that this city of old time hath made insurrection against kings, and that rebellion and sedition have been made therein. Mm -hmm. There have been mighty kings also over Jerusalem. These are good kings we had. We had David, we had Solomon, we had Hezekiah, we had Josiah, we had good kings. Go ahead. Which have ruled over all countries beyond the river. And told tribute and custom was paid unto them. So these guys at one point in time had power. 
So they can be a danger now if they're seditious and evil as you say they are. Go ahead. Give ye now commandment to cause these men to cease. Make Zubabel and make Joshua and them behind them stop building the temple. Go ahead. And that this city be not builded until another commandment shall be given from me. Take heed now that ye fail not to do this. Why should damage grow to the hurt of the kings? Now when the copy, now when the copy of King Artaxerxes' letter was read before Rahum and Shimshai the scribe and their companions, they went up in haste to Jerusalem unto the Jews and made them to cease by force and power. Then ceased the work of the house of God, which is at Jerusalem. So it ceased unto the second year of the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Yeah, so, for, so for two years, they caused it to stop building. We built and it said no more building. For, for two years, we, we were forced to stop. And that broke the spirits of brothers. And, J- and then um, Zechariah and um, Haggai had to step in and encourage the people again. Because they lost hope. and saw it getting angry. So maybe it ain't meant to be. So he had to send the prophets to blast them for that. When you read about Zechariah and Haggai, must this house remain um, destroyed while your houses, you know what I'm talking about, Haggai 1. That's what happened during that course of two years. Ze- um, Zubabel and Joshua caught spirits. They got frustrated. So these heathens have a habit of doing this evil to frustrate our purpose within this very room and all throughout the states and countries in which our congregations and other congregations are in. You understand? So now let's get chapter 9, verse 1. Let's speed up a little bit. 9, verse 1. Ezra, chapter 9, verse 1. To now, two. now when these things were done, the princes came to me, saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the lands. So during this time, Israel came back from Jerusalem. They came back, came back from their exile, and they came back with heathen wives during this time. Go ahead. Doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. Including Edomites as well, and you're reading Ezra. Go ahead. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Go ahead. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers hath been chief in this trespass. So we, us marrying other nations was a trespass. It was a transgression. It was a sin. Um, jump down to verse 10. Verse 10. And now, O our God, what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken thy commandments. By marrying heathen wives, go ahead, and husbands, go ahead. Which thou hast commanded by the servants, the prophets, saying, The land unto which ye go to possess it is an unclean land with the filthiness of the people of the land. Because when Israel married these wives, the wives took control of the house. They ran the house, and the men followed the customs of their wives. Likewise, the women followed the customs of their husbands. And the children followed the customs of the mothers, or the fathers. Go ahead, heathen fathers, go ahead. With their abominations, which have filled it from one end to another with their uncleanness. Now, therefore, give not your daughters unto their sons, neither take their daughters unto your sons, nor seek their peace or their wealth forever, that ye may be strong and eat the good of the land and leave it for an inheritance to your children forever. So by Israel being told to leave these other nations alone, what's that called today? Segregation. Segregation. It's called racism. The Lord's saying, leave these nations alone. They're unclean to you. That's racist. But I thought we were racist. Prejudice. So when Moses dealt with the Ethiopian woman, what was the reason for that? Mm. That's what they would ask. They would ask that question. But remember, Mo- this is before Moses got those laws and commandments to do that. Joseph, is, Joseph lived in a land where his people were not found. He lived in a land for years of Egypt. There's no, no Hebrew women there. Right. So I under those circumstances, that's just for most side let that ride. Exactly. We have no excuse for that today. Our women are all over the place. Israel's all over the place. That excuse no longer stands. Now, you may hear about Ruth. Remember, in the, according to the law, when your a brother dies even behind no children, he had to marry her to raise up seed to his dead brother. That's regarding Deuteronomy 25, verse 5 to 10. So that was done by according to the law. Ain't the law command you to marry no heathen at this time? That law no longer applies now regarding raising up seed to your dead brother. Because that, 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 that required you, your brother having land, inheritance that you took over in his death, in his stead. We don't have land now. That law, that law no longer applies. You understand? So they can't use Moses, they can't use Joseph, and they can't use Ruth. Got to cover each corner because heathens are slick. They're snakes. Exactly. And they'll and use I, that or I, attempt to use that excuse. Exactly. And the reason why I say this is because I know we're going to go over the situation with Moses. So that's the reason why I'm not going to go deep into it. 
But when I mention about the Ethiopian woman and Moses, the, your enemy tries to put it out there that that the Miriam and Aaron was well. Miriam was upset because Moses had married the Ethiopian woman, and they was trying to say that Moses was white, and the uh, the woman was a black woman. That's right. the lie that they try to put out here. Right. So when we get to that, we're gonna tear all of that up. Yep. Y'all all right? So I ain't gonna pop the bubble now. Go ahead. Read on verse thirteen. And after all that has come upon us for our evil deeds and for our great trespass, seeing that thou, our God, hast punished us less than our iniquities deserve and hast given us such deliverance as this. Verse 14. Should we again break thy commandments and join in affinity with the people of these abominations? Wouldst not thou be angry with us till thou hast consumed us so that there should be no remnant nor escaping? The word affinity is not a Negro word. Look it up, please. Affinity. I sent you the link. Should we transgress, break the commandments by joining in affinity with these people of these abominations? Affinity. It says a spontaneous or natural liking or sympathy for someone or something. Synonyms. Empathy for. Report with. Rapport with. Sympathy for. Accord with. Harmony with. Relationship with. Bond with. Fellow, fellow feeling or closeness with, to, understanding of, or for, liking of, for, fondness, chemistry with. So let's go into being with the other nations. You know, you know what brings this about? Brings about this, this type of um, activity? Christianity does this. Christianity pushes this nonsense of having a fondness and relationship with the other nations. We're all one in Christ Jesus. Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, barbarian nor Scythian. They use all those scriptures to push that vibe, that, that intermingling vibe, that Catholic vibe, that Babylonian vibe, Stockholm Syndrome vibe. That's what it is. Christianity is an infection of Stockholm Syndrome. That's what it is. I said it before. I'll say it again. It's an infection of Stockholm Syndrome. It says a similarity of characteristics suggesting a relationship Especially a resemblance in structure between blah, 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 I want that. Similarity, resemblance, likeness, kinship, relationship, association, link, analogy, similar to correspondence. The law says not to have any of those things with the other nations. The law says not to have any relationship of any kind with the other nations, marriage-wise. You understand? That's a sin you do that. That's racist. That's, a, that's a, modern terms, that'd be racist. Tell, you, tell your son you're black, so it's no matter no white girls. No matter no Asian girls. You would say, damn, that's racist. You tell your son that for. That's prejudice. The Lord said to his people, same thing. Don't marry them, don't marry them, don't marry them. Stick to your own people. That's racist. What's that make God? Racist. Oh, boy. Let's go to verse uh, 15. Verse 15. O Lord God of Israel, thou art righteous. For we remain yet escaped, as it is this day. Behold, we are before thee in our trespasses, for we cannot stand before thee because of this. Now, let's go to uh, Nehemiah 2, verse 10. So the Lord is pushing racism to the people of Israel. He's making it clear. I mean, I'll clear it up more. Nehemiah 2, verse 10. Nehemiah 2, verse 10. When Sambalat, the Horonite, and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, heard of it. It grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. That's why they attacked Zerubbabel. Because, he, because the heathens saw that there was a brother that stood up for the welfare of their people, that loved their people, and cared for their people, and they frustrated his purpose as well. Nehemiah's and Ezra's purpose as well to rebuild what was left to be rebuilt, the walls and the houses within Jerusalem that pissed the heathens off. Likewise, to see brothers teaching and raising their people up and converting them and changing their minds for the world, because they care about their people, that frustrates the heathens even till now. It frustrates them now. They won't express it as openly as these heathens did here, but they do it indirectly with slanders and assassination character attempts and documentaries of false information. That's what they do. It's the same exact thing. Jump to verse, um, go to verse 12, read on. Verse 12, and I arose in the night, I and some few men with me, neither told I any man what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. 
Neither was there any beast with me, save the beast that I rode upon. Jump down to verse 18, 19. Then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. Go ahead. But when Sambalat the Horonite, and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, and Geshem the Arabian Geshem heard the Arabian. it. So you have ne the, the, Nehemiah received um, order from the king to be allowed to leave his job as cupbearer of the king and rebuild the walls and houses of Jerusalem. And he came with these paperwork saying, listen, I've been given order from the king to rebuild. The Israelite brother said, okay, cool, let's go. Let's go. We'll help you to rebuild. So when the heathens here, we're going to read again, verse 19. When the heathens here got word of it, it pissed them off. Read again. But when Sambalat, the Horonite, African, and Tobiah, the servant, the Ammonite, Japanese, and Geshem, the Arabian, Arabian heard, go ahead. heard it, they laughed us to scorn. They mocked us. Like they do us now, you purple Power Rangers. All these slanders and jokes they make about us. Look at their funny clothes. Fake black Hebrew Israelites. It's all the same. Go ahead. And despised us and said, what is this thing that ye do? You guys are interesting. That's the kind of term they use for us. What? These Negroes, look at them. They're funny. They're intriguing. <laughs> this black Israelite stuff is funny. <laughs> hey, now they'll say that to you like, like they're really kidding about us. But in right. their mind, if they can murder us, they would do it. Yep. Okay, they tell you, oh, they're interesting. They're this and that and the other. But in their heart, they wish, the, they wish death on us. I'm going to prove clearly. it, too. We're going to prove it. Go ahead. What is this thing that ye do? What are you guys doing? He's teaching this Bible. What are, you, what are you wearing? What are you doing? Go ahead. Will ye rebel against the king? Go, you guys a cult? Go, go ahead. Continue. Then answered I them and said unto them, the God of heaven, he will prosper That's us. That's what we say to these other nations. The God of heaven will prosper us in what we're doing. Regardless of what you say or do, he will prosper us. Go ahead. Therefore, we, his servants, will arise and build. Therefore, we, his servants, will rise up and build. We're going to build our city back together. Build our, or now, spiritually, build our people back together. Go ahead. But ye have no portion, nor right, nor me memorial in Jerusalem. Saying the exact same thing Zubabel said. You have nothing to do with us. You hear the repetition of the prophets? They don't, the other nations are insignificant to us. They want our problem. You have no right, no memorial, no portion, nothing to do with us. This is not your business. Continue pushing your Mel Gibson revised version Jesus, your Kelter Skelter Christ, Charles Manson Christ. Keep pushing. Be the devil you are. Push your deceit. Deceive those who the Lord has ordained to be deceived. Let us do our job or we're going to destroy you. And we're going to do it tonight. Because these heathens, they need a, need a wake-up call. Some of them think we're stupid. we got to school them. Educate you heathens on what we're about here. What we know here is some peace warning shots for you. <laughs> Nehemiah 4 and 6. Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 6. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof. For the people had a mind to work. Our people had a mind to work, to rebuild, help their people. Go ahead. But it came to pass that when Sambalat and Tobiah and the Arabians... And, and the what? And the Arabians... Plural now. First it was Geshem. Now it's more than one. Arabians. Arabs. Go ahead. And like you see on YouTube attacking us now. All of us with, with might now. First it was just Edom attacking us. Now you got Arabs joining in now. Go ahead. And the Ammonites... And the Ashdodites, bastards living there now. Go ahead. Heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up. The, people, the nation's being rebuilt. The city's being rebuilt. Go ahead. And that the breaches began to be stopped. And we start fixing the the, the breaches in our people spiritually. And that's modern terms of bringing it to y'all. Go ahead. Then they were very raw. So what? We were what? And they were very raw. Start pissing nations off because they're not just seeing a bunch of blacks in here. You got people from the islands, West West Africa, South Africa. North America, Central, South America. We all over the place. You know, they're not just seeing a bunch of blacks in here. Because you see a bunch of blacks, they're going to say, oh, they hate Hispanics. See, they, they, they ain't got it yet. Right. Hispanics, you know, they got Hispanics with them too. Damn. Yeah, got they got the whole damn um, nation now. It's a problem. They have Americans are there too. Oh, man. They were wroth. They were wroth, and that pissed them off. And it's pissing them off again. Let's, uh... Where we at? That was Nehemiah 4, verse 8. You want verse 8? Yeah, verse 8. And conspired all of them together. Yes, and what did they do? 
and conspired all of them together. They all got together. Go ahead. To come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. That's what they're doing right now. Conspiring together to fight against us and to slow this movement down. And they're not going to do it. It's in stone. They're not going to stop it. It can't be stopped. It's already begun. They know that, but they're going to try to slow the clock down. It don't make a difference. We out of here regardless. Nehemiah 6, verse 15. Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 15. So the wall was finished in the 25th day of the month Elul, in 50 and 2 days. Right. And it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof, and all the heathen that were about us saw these things. Saw the city being rebuilt. Go ahead. The walls being rebuilt. The houses being rebuilt. Go ahead. They were much cast down in their own because eyes. Because they tried to stop it and they couldn't do it. They failed. Go ahead. For they perceived that this work was wrought of our God. And there will come a time when these nations are going to realize that this work right here we're doing here is of God. They're going to have to accept it. They're going to have to acknowledge it. They're acknowledging it now, but they're trying to stop it. Right. You understand? Right. They know it's the work of the Most High. They don't want you to think that it's the work right. of the Most High. The reason why this Trump, this thing is tearing their brain up like we was reading in that tale that it's driving them crazy because they know this is of God. That's what the problem is. They know it's as of God. They try, but because of their whiteness, mm -hmm. I have to say that. They'll yep. come before you with their quote-unquote whiteness and tell you that it's not about God, hoping that you will be blinded by their quote-unquote whiteness and will believe them. Right. But when they go back home, they're scared and troubled to death. You follow me? Ezra 5 verse, um, 1 Ezra 5 verse 69. In the Apocrypha. 1 Ezra chapter 5 verse 69. For we likewise, as ye, do obey your Lord and do sacrifice unto him from the days of Asbazareth. This is, the, this is a sorry, this is a, a repeat of Ezra 4 and 2 that are earlier. But I want this point out. I want this point to be brought out. Go ahead. The king of the Assyrians who brought us hither. Go ahead. Then Zerubbabel and Jesus and the chief of the families of Israel said unto them, It is not for us and you to build together. It is what? It is not for us and you to build together. The Lord don't want us building together. This is not a Christianity movement is what they're saying to them. We don't deal with two other nations. It ain't about you. It ain't for you. Go ahead. It is not for us and you to build together in house unto the Lord our God. Go ahead. We ourselves alone. We what? We ourselves alone. 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 Not all inclusive. Alone. Go ahead. We'll build unto the Lord of Israel, according as Cyrus the king of the Persians hath commanded us. Go ahead. But the heathen of the land, lying heavy upon the inhabitants of Judea and holding them straight, hindered their building. Slow us down. Go ahead. And by their secret plots. By their what? By their secret plots. Because these guys, they sit down, they do their research, they gather information. They, they'll lie and say, oh, it's for a research paper. That's a lie. Oh, it's not for a research paper. Oh, years of doing that, really? Is right to do a research paper? Really? Okay. Secret plots. And po popular and persuasions. Popular persuasions are TV, media, uh, magazines, um, documentaries. That's popular persuasions. Big fancy words, fancy books, fancy titles, doctor this. Um, it's just nonsense. Go ahead. And popular persuasions and commotions. Oh, another popular persuasion is religion. Christianity is a popular persuasion. Oh, but God's loved the world, brother. That's racism. Oh, God, but it doesn't matter what color he is. Popular persuasions. God's loved the world. Popular persuasion. No Jew nor Greek. Popular persuasions. They tell you that color doesn't matter, correct? Come on, be honest with me. Don't they say that? So how is it that when you go, when you went, let's take it, let's go 100 years ago, and you go inside the quote-unquote white churches, what color is Christ in there? So-called white. I use the term white before just for identifying purposes. They have never been white. They're not a nasty white. They're not a beige. They're not tan. They're red. That's their color. Mm hmm Okay, they're not an off-white, they're not a dirty white, none of that. They're red. Mm -hmm. The dirty part's right. Uh, read that part again. And by their secret plots and popular persuasion. Popular persuasion goes into religion and the media. The media. 
Go ahead. And commotions. And commotions. Go ahead. They hindered the finishing of the building all the time that King Cyrus lived. Go ahead. So they were hindered from building for the space of two years until the reign of Darius. So it gives you the time, space of two years. And in that, in that two years, you had Haggai and Zechariah trying to encourage them to rebuild again because they were being, because their purpose was being frustrated by these heathens who were rejected, okay, from us doing the work of the Lord. We didn't want their help. We knew that, that there was false and phony anyway. And now, what's funny is you have black folks that side with them. Yeah, because it doesn't matter. But these same black folks were happy and crying when Obama was made president. Why? Why are you crying about Obama being president? What makes Obama so special? I don't know. Maybe because he's black? I don't know. Maybe that's it. Because if he was white, he'd be another president. But what makes him special to Negroes is that of his color of his skin makes him significant to black folks. And so they voted for him. So color obviously matters because there's a colored guy, colored, in the White House. So when black folks say it don't matter, ask them, were you happy when Obama was president? Yeah. Why? They're going to have to either lie or just admit you're right, color matters. They can't escape. I've done it. I've asked them, well, why? were you happy when Obama was president? Yeah. Why? Uh, yeah, well, that's true. You got a point. So it matters. It matters. And white folks knew that. So-called white folks knew they that. They put him in there. Because they put him in there. They allowed him to be there. And they know just because he's black, he doesn't have to do anything for you. And you'll still be okay with yep. it. Yep. But if he was a white man, you'd have been demanding all kind of stuff. Because color matters. That's the point. Yep. A hey, color just doesn't matter to us. But color matters to them. Yep. You understand? Because the only people you hear that says that color doesn't matter is really us. You understand? Is the white man teach our people to say color don't matter? You understand? But when it comes to the white man, the white man gonna tell you, listen, Christ is white, the 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 um the, the Egyptians was white, yep. the Jews are white. You understand? The white man gonna tell you straight up. But when it comes to our people, we are the ones that are gonna say color doesn't matter. Why? Because the white man taught us that. All right? right. That's that's like a um defense mechanism that he implanted in our minds. Yep. Let's get um the video I want, YouTube. KKK member. Imperial Clud, KKK member. That's disgusting. That's his name. I'm not even making this up. You can't make this up. I'm not that good. Here comes the fun. Such cowardice. No better mask on. He's probably your judge or your lawyer, your doctor, your dentist. I've seen uh, 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 another Clud on another party say he's a reverend. Yeah. I saw that. So it might be the same dude. Might, might be. A reverend. Reverend Clud. Same name. Damn. Go ahead. Uh, you believe like we do. Um, you feel like we do. We've got to get our word out there. Uh, white race is, is, is not doing too well, as you know. There's a lot of race mixing going on. There's The white race ain't doing too good right now. There's a lot of race mixing going on. We agree with that. I love it. That's good. You're right. Well, watch who he mentions regarding the mixing. Watch this. There's things going on right now that um, it's really, well, it's not good. Uh, I was looking the other day and just walking through the shopping center, you know, and finishing up some Christmas shopping and things like that for my kids. And every other person I saw was a Negro and a white. I mean, it was just or a Hispanic in a white, or, or something like that. It's just not. What did he say? A Negro in a white, and a Hispanic in a white. They don't like y'all either. I don't care how bright y'all up in here. You a nigga too in AI. I'm just gonna tell you straight. Hey, hey, hey. Bilingual hey, you know niggas. What, you know what's That's beautiful it. about that? Like a swim Because good. a lot of them say, well, me no Negro. I ain't, ain't me. Yeah, yeah, you, you black like this. You black like this. <laughs> y'all black like this too in their eyes. Go ahead. It's not acceptable. It, it, it's all an abomination against God. And, and, and I went through the scriptures, you know, talking about that. Um, why race makes and wrong. They understand that. We just read it. That's why I bought it out. Because they know. So we'll get along just fine. Don't mess around our kids. Don't mess around with your kids. Just don't try to set, don't set ourselves on fire and put burning crosses in the back of our back. Y'all don't do that stuff. It's going to hurt you. But aside from that... Don't mess around with us. Don't mix around with us. We agree with that stuff. We agree. You know what's amazing? Because as we watch this, some of us 
I have to, I'm daringly saying this because I don't know. I just have to put it out there. Some of us are looking at this and just listening to what he's saying and forgetting about what this vicious demon represents. Mm -hmm. Do you represent, do you realize what this man represents? Mm -hmm. Do you know the history of this group that he's connected with? Mm -hmm. Literal murder of our people openly. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Right. How come these apologetics ain't speaking against this? Right. Because they're one and the same. Yeah, right. I'll bring that out. That we're going to bring out. Right. And look what's on the space. And guess who represents Caesar? That's how he wore They don't, they don't black Christ, they honor that cross on their face. It's the same movement. It's the same movement. He's just, they're more militant with it, more violent. But the apologetics is more the Gentile, slick, cunning side. Of the same, two sides of the same coin, as I'm going to bring out earlier, later on. Go ahead. No, no, no. The apologetics, their words are smoother than oil. Well, yep. But his heart draws swords. Yep. Okay, that's the deal. They, they're yep. all about murder, all yep. of them. These so-called Christian nice white people are about murder. Mm -hmm. Straight up. Yep. How in the world are you going to tell me about nice white folks and the church is sitting on stolen land? Listen to me good. And the land that the church is sitting on, don't you realize that the Native Americans fought to keep this land theirs? This is what I'm talking about. Our people go to sleep with reality. Mm -hmm. Do you realize that this land belonged to the Native American Indians? Do you think that they gave this up willingly? Talk to me. So that meant they fought to keep this, and they were killed and murdered. Mm -hmm. Then these same so-called Christians going to build a foundation and put a church on top of bones, on top of blood-soaked dirt, so you can understand. Build a church on it, put a fake image of Christ in it with Jesus, and tell all the little poor black wimp niggers and, and Indians, come learn about Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Our people are asleep to the reality. This is stolen land. The blood of our forefathers are underneath this, up underneath these buildings, crying, like the scriptures say, to avenge our blood on them that dwell upon the earth, like it says in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. Continue. And I'm going to get into a, um, some, I'm going to get into a lot more scriptures here lately. That's why it's very important to go ahead and subscribe. Uh, if you hadn't done that, I'm going to pause for just a minute, please. Go down there immediately, please. Just click that subscribe button. It doesn't take you just two seconds. Got it done? All right. Now I can continue. I want to talk tonight a little bit about uh, an organization that's really bothering me. Uh, they're these black Hebrew Israelites. Um, now, I'm going to tell you a little about what they believe and what they think of you. Think of me. Uh, and they'll tell you. They hate us. They absolutely hate us. They hate our children. They hate our wives. They hate us. I'm not talking about just Klansmen. I'm talking about white people in general. They think we're the devils. You got to pause. pause it. Hold it. Hold it. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. That, thank you. That's what yeah, I want to do. The apocryphy. The uh, apoc. The what's the, hypocrisy. the word? Hypocrisy. Right. The hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Listen. 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 Here's the representative <laughs> of the murderers of the murder capital of America, talking about us hating somebody. Have the Israelites ever lynched anyone? No. Have the Israelites ever murdered anyone? No. Have the Israelites ever burned down somebody's house? Have the, have the Israelites have done any of lynch people, burned them on crosses, hung them on trees, took them out, dragged them to Gator death, bait. gator bait, have the Israelites done it? How in the hell could this vicious, fork-tongued demon sit up here and say these things and expecting us to be as stupid and gullible to talk about, yeah, we're going to click a subscribe button? How, 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 how stupid do, do these people expect us to be? And y'all think I'm saying that about him. I look at him, all the so-called white Christians the same way, whether they're wearing a hood or not. And don't be fooled by this, what's perceived to be ignorant. The judges, these the ones that speak intelligently, will go put a hood on and do the same thing and act like it's not the, right. So right. you can understand. Don't hey, be fooled. Hey, because Christianity, what you all got to understand is Christianity and the KKK, they go hand, hand in, in hand. hand. Yep. Hand in hand. You understand? And as I as Deacon and I don't go into the class, you're going to see what we're talking mm -hmm. about. Go ahead. They hate us. 
They absolutely hate us. They hate our children. They hate our wives. They hate us. I'm not talking about this Klansman. I'm talking about white people in general. They think we're the devils. Pause it, pause it, pause it. <laughs> we don't think that a devil. We know that a devil. Right. Not only do we know, hold it, hold it, I'm going to do better than that. Not only, not only, hold it, hold it. I'm going to put this, I let this, I want this to go on worldwide television. Not only do we know the white man is the devil, not only do we say that the white man is the devil, we will prove that the white man is the devil by the Bible, and we dare anyone on the face of this globe to challenge that. <laughs> Proceed, 34. They believe that we're children of Edom. They have no evidence of this. That they can, that they pull this, this false scripture that, that they just twist to make you think a bunch of garbage. And the sad part about it is they're getting weak white people to believe it. We're getting weak white people to believe it. We don't care if they believe it or not. It is what it is. We can convince you, not convince you. We don't care about that. But it frightens them, though. That's why I said it. I said that they, it's fear. This, is fear. this video is made out of pure fear. That's what Christianity is all about. It's about keeping us docile, complacent, weak, because they fear us. Go ahead. Now, I want to share a clip with you on these black Hebrew Israelites. I want you to hear the profanity they're using. I want you to hear the hatred that they're using. Stop, stop, stop. Now, remember earlier we read out in Ezra how the heathens, they mentioned about the sedition of kings, the bad and rebellious city. I remember that? How they used that to convince the king to stop us from building, right? Their understanding of no mixing is not about what the Bible says. They just hate us. They hate blacks, Hispanics. They hate us with a passion. That's where they, that's where they pull that scripture to, to, to uh, establish we don't want to deal with y'all. We know no race mixing, not because we hate the races, but because the Lord says don't mix with them. Not because we hate them or dislike them. They use that scripture because that scripture because they despise us. They despise us. That's why they use that scripture. Go ahead. I forgot to mention the language. <laughs> Got the language. I'm sorry. This is by far the most vile of us. That I mentioned y'all earlier, gonna use the worst of us to defame us as a whole. So, in, in the eyes of society, we all look and sound, unfortunately, like this. So, please mind the language. Someone's plays briefly. Well, Go right. Ahead. Can I hold it? Hold it. Let me just uh, uh, piggyback off what you just said. Hold it. Wait a minute. What Deacon Ithon is bringing out is heavy because the fact that they put this up there. They want, whenever you hear the term Israelite, this is what they call guilt by association. Yep. They want you to associate this as Israel. So if you come across in the street and somebody says, hey, can I get a, one of your flyers or something? And when you talk to them about Israel, this is supposed to pop up in their mind. Right. And why do you, why, when they do that, the objective is for them to already shut you down based on this. And they've right. never heard the real truth, what you might be bringing them. You follow me? Right. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Do y'all really understand what I'm saying? When they, when they try to put up these, these, these wild, recluse type of brothers that's out here doing all kinds of craziness, they want you to say that these are the Israelites. And once they get you focused on that image, you won't recognize this. You won't even know anything about what the Most High is really doing. You follow me? Y'all got that? Okay. So only for a little while will we tolerate this niggerdom. Whipping on the back, that's coming back to you so-called white people, man. Hardcore bondage, man. And you're not going to get any sunscreen in the sun, piece of shit. See what they're doing? They're being filmed. Watch the footage. They're being filmed. It's not, them, it's not us filming. It's them filming, filming them. It's heathens driving by, filming us. And when you teach the camp, you see them. They'll walk. You know, Esau's the worst. Oh. <sighs> Ah! Uh, Achoo! What the hell are you doing? What? Really? Just take the damn picture, man. Hurry up. They do that stuff for me teaching at camp. Go ahead. 
How you like my hair? How you like my pigmentation, bitch? You're a faggot. You're a faggot. You are a faggot. Wait a minute. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Let me let me let me, let me get let me get y'all attention for a second. Y'all listening? Hold on now. Hold on. I know this is laughter, but listen. I, I need y'all to listen to what I'm about to say. Do you really think? that when the white man goes home and he's on his bed trembling because of this truth coming out, do you think it's this that he's afraid of? No. But he, exactly. He puts that up there for you to not know what he's really scared of. You follow me? This right here is killing him. This right here, when he sees Israel repenting, that's killing him because they know what the scriptures say. When that 144,000 member is sealed up, they behind is going into slavery. That's what that's talking about. So that's what they're afraid of. And the more this gospel comes out like the scriptures say, and this gospel shall be taught throughout all the earth and to witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Right. So that meant once, those, once that number is sealed up, Christ is going to send the angels, bring it on. That's what they're scared of. They, this right here ain't doing nothing but turning our people into craziness. They ain't worrying about this. They're worried about what's happening up here. If you're a faggot in America, you're going to be destroyed with nuclear missiles. Lesbians too. God has got judgment coming to this place. And you know it. That's why you out here. You know that America's out of here, man. You know the economy's getting ready to crash. Because you, you, don't, you look like you, you, you used to be patriotic. But you lost your patriotism because it's bullshit. You see it's all bullshit now. And among these nations... And you're still going into slavery. Piece of shit. Now that's just darn right disturbing right there. Do we preach hate like that? No, I don't. No, Pause I don't. It. Stop, see? Now, hold it, hold it. See, y'all be going to sleep on brothers. I ain't talking about the white man. They all be going to sleep on bro on brothers, your own, your own brothers and sisters. Some people will say, some of us will say, no, you're right, you don't preach hate like that, forgetting who this man, what this man represents. But he's flag, right. The flag behind right, him represents. Right, exactly. Do they realize that? That Confederate flag, do they realize what that represents? That is a, a symbol to keep Negroes in slavery. That's what it was about. And he's sitting up in front of that talking about saying, we don't preach hate. I can't believe, like you said, the hypocrisy of these people. It is absolutely amazing. But that shows you the absolute disrespect and the contempt that they have towards your intelligence. That shows you to get up there, to get up there and say these things, and you represent the people that lynched my fathers. You represent the people that burned my houses down. Are you kidding? That that shows you we think on two different wavelengths. Our mindsets are different. The way Esau sees things, the way we see things is entirely different. It's if they're odd people. Go ahead and play it. Organization I represent doesn't. The problem is, is these people exist. Um, they're out there on the streets of Birmingham. They're out there in Los Angeles. Um, they're coming out from everywhere. They're coming out from everywhere, meaning we cannot stop them. That's the fear. Again, the them is not talking about this wild foolishness that you it's see with saw, those camps. No. The scriptures say that their line went throughout the earth. That's what the Most High talk about with the truth. Mm -hmm. he, a lot of that matters that you just heard on this clip, the Lord ain't letting that mess go nowhere. Mm -hmm. That mess going to stay right there on the corners where they're at, and the Most High is not going to bless them to go travel nowhere to do nothing. Mm -hmm. So this, when he said it's coming out from everywhere, he is not talking about what he's showing you. I want y'all to understand, he only put that there to put you to sleep to who he's really afraid of. Yep. We're well, going to say it. Go ahead. And these are the ones that we talk about in Revelations um, 2, verse 9, the synagogue of Satan. It's not only these Yiddish Jews that you hear about. It's the it's these Negroes, too. He says, not just the fake ones over there. It's Negroes, too. That Revelations 2 and 9 is talking about, talking about us in here. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. And there are those... He's saying neither one of us. Yeah, basically, yeah. So wait a minute now. If he's saying that we're not the Jews and we know the so-called white ones are not the Jews, who the Jews then? Yeah. 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 Uh, we are a Christian organization, regardless of what the crooked left media is going to tell you. We are, uh, you know, we, we, we're a very Christian organization, and, and it's a requirement. Stop, stop, stop. Did you hear what he said? We are a Christian organization. He's absolutely right. That's exactly what he is. To be an organization is that you are a Christian. You must believe in God. 
See that? To be in an organization, oh. you must be a Christian and believe in God. That's all I wanted. So it's the same thing. Christianity is this. That's what it is. Southern Baptist comes from that. Because the Northern Baptists were there first, and the Negroes said, we can't join their church, let's join our, start our own. Southern Baptists. A lot of us in the South come from Southern Baptist backgrounds. <sighs> Revelation 11, 11. This is his fear comes from. The book of Revelation. Revelation 11 and verse 11. Yep. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. So what you all seeing right there, that's the fear. You understand? You, you all heard what he said. He said, they popping up all over the place. They're in Birmingham. They're in Los Angeles. You understand? So the fear, when the nations and them see us waking up, fear is going to come upon them. You know, that's why you got people doing documentary about the Hebrew Israelites. Mm -hmm. You got one of them. He said, listen, we got to put a stop to it now before they multipl multiply into millions. Mm -hmm. You know, you all heard that. They say, yo, we got to... And we got to put a stop to them now before they multiply into millions. Mm -hmm. So that's what's going on right now. The fear is coming upon the nations because they are see us rising up. They see Israel rising up through the four corners of the earth. Read that again. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. The spirit of life from the Most High God is what? It's us waking up to the truth that we are Israelites and, and that we keep in the laws. Right. You understand? There you go. We keeping the laws and waking up to the truth that we are the Israelites. That's the spirit of life. That's why we say all that negative imagery that they're trying to put out there on Israel, guess what? That ain't going to stand. Because the Mosai is going to put the real imagery, the real men, the, the real leaders that he want to stand up and lead this nation, he going to put them on the forefront. Mm -hmm. He going to let their images be out throughout all the four, four, four corners of the earth. Right. You know? Hey, let me let me prove that. Give me the book of uh, Isaiah 30, the bread of affliction, bread of adversity. Let's read that. Because like we was talking about earlier, he said that the that the Most High said that his line. You, give me that scripture also. Their line should go throughout the earth. Give me those two. I'm gonna be quick. This is what the Most High is talking about. This is what the nations are afraid of. Your enemies are afraid of this. this is what we're about to read right now. Psalms 19 and 4. Their line is gone out throughout through all the earth. The, the line meaning the gospel. The gospel of the Most High is going to be taught where? Read it again. Their line is gone out through all the earth. Their line is gone throughout all the earth. So the line is talking about what Deacon Malachi had just brought up. The commandments, the teaching of the commandments of the Most High. Not a whole bunch of filth that you hear Israelites getting up on the screen talking a bunch of garbage. The most I ain't going to cause that to go nowhere. You follow me? Can, can I get a witness? Yes, now, give me the other one. Was there more on that, Isaac, or that yeah, was it? No, there's more. And their words to the end of the world. And their, hold it, and their what? Words. And their words, meaning God's words, that's what he's talking about. God's commandments, God's words. To the what? To the end of the world. Matthews. Matthews 24, 13. That one. Then give me that other one. Then their and their and their words to the end of the world, meaning all over. That's the reason why the most high is, is providing travel. Matthew 24, 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Go ahead. And this gospel. And this gospel. Of the kingdom. Of the kingdom, meaning this, the line, so you can understand what we read earlier. Shall be preached in all the world. To the ends of the earth. Go ahead. For a witness unto all nations. Because Israel is in all the nations. Then the ones, that's when they're going to hear, ye are the sons and daughters of the living God. That's what they're going to hear in all these places. Go ahead. And then shall the end come. And when they wake up, when that last one wakes up, and then shall the end come. That's what your enemies are scared of. Now go back to the one that I asked for about I, the, the, the diversity. Isaiah 30 and verse 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. So the ones that the man, the, the, the enemies, he, he ain't worrying about these, those guys up on the corner making a bunch of foolishness. 
The Most High is getting ready to bring the real prophets out, the real teachers out. Read that statement again. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. The teachers of the real teachers of the Most High is not going to be hid. Go ahead. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers. The Most High is going to make sure that Israel see the proper teachers. That's the reason why he's going to cut off the line for the mess, the beast of people the people teaching garbage, he's not going to allow the people to see them. But the scripture said, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. That's the reason why the Most High is going to make sure that the right teachers go everywhere and teach this gospel so they can bring on the end. You got it? Y'all understand? So he ain't having foolishness go all over the earth. No, the Most High is going to leave that mess right there on the corner. You follow me? He's going to cause the real gospel to go out and be taught all over. That's what we're talking about. That's what Matthew's 28 is talking about when they say go throughout all nations and all the people that's in all, all the nations because Israelites is in all of them. That's what that's talking about. Therefore, go ye to all nations. That scripture I'm talking about, the one that the Christians just purposely mess up. All right, that's it. Go ahead, Deacon. Revelation 12, verse 15. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood. That'll after. be your popular persuasions. That'll be your secret plots, your commotions, religions. That's all the same thing. Go ahead. Lies. Go ahead. After the woman. The woman is us, the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what it's talking about. Go ahead. That he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Of those lies. Well, give me um, carried away of the flood. Get Hebrews 13, verse 9. To show a carried away of what? Hebrews 13, verse 9. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. That's the flood. Go ahead. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. That's it? Yes, sir. Ephesians 4, 14. Carried away with doctrines, floods, lies, same thing. Go ahead. <clears throat> It's all, Christian, it's all the same thing. Christian organization, Christianity is all the same. Same uh, nonsense. Go ahead. Ephesians 4.14. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Carried about with what? Carried about with every wind of doctrine. Or flood of it. Go ahead. By the slight of men. By the cunning of men. And Go ahead. cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Yeah, like being apologetic. That's a cunning craftiness, a uh, sight of men. Another reform, unreformed cr form of Christianity. That's all it is. They said that they may what? Lie in wait. Read that they may what? Yeah. Whereby they, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Right. That's what, you gotta That's what it's up. for. You got to pick that up. That's what God said earlier. We're a Christian organization. Lie in wait to deceive. Why they burning crosses in the back of your house and setting you, setting you on fire? You know putting what it means? Post, putting on postcards. <laughs> Do you know what it means to lie and wait to deceive? You got to think about why the Lord allowed, why the Lord caused those words to be written in the Bible. To lie and wait. That means you set a trap. Listen to me. That means you set a trap and you sit there and you wait to see what sucker is going to take the bait. That's what that means. Mm -hmm. So they'll put the bait out there. You know what the bait is? God loves everybody. Mm -hmm. No Jew, no Greek. No Jew, no Greek. God's love the world. Ooh. The, the other the other bait is like what this man just said. We all, all, uh, let me use the apologetics. They just say the clan and the apologetics, same, same people. Apologetics say, well, come and learn about Jesus. I'm trying to save you from destruction. I've even heard them say that. Mm -hmm. Trying to save black people from the blacks and Hispanics from destruction. That's what they say. <clears throat> so that's a, that's a piece of bread that they put out there. Put it in the trap and sit back and see if you're going to bite it. Mm -hmm. Then once you go into that thing, then they put that poison in your head mm -hmm. where you hate your own people and you love them. Indeed, indeed. And you're going to end up dying with them. Now, go back that picture again. What happened to Bond or Free there? All in one in Christ Jesus. Okay, Where's the equality in this? These whites are Christians here. And the black guy hanging there is most likely a Christian too. The picture's too far back. You got to zoom it in. Zoom in and let the people see. You <clears throat> got to get the, got to get the reality going. Open it up. Let them see that thing. Zoom that in. Let them see it. Where the rest of them women at? Oh, the people in there. Bring them in here. Let them see these things. See that? See the Christianity there? 
Yeah, well, it's Bondo Greek there. Can y'all see this? Can y'all yeah. see this? What Israelite group did this? I'm talking to you now. What Israelite group did this to, for the Southern Poverty Law Center to put Israel in the same category with the damn Klan? You got to be crazy. Look at look at this thing here. This is not drawings. These are actual photographs with these white, red demons sitting up there smiling in the picture. What kind of conscience do they have? Look at this. That's not a drawing. That's an actual photograph where they're posing. These are your Christians, so you can understand. What Christian group went against this when this was going on? Nobody. Because they're all the same. Mm -hmm. Go to verse 16. I'll get through this. Verse 16. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. So the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth. The earth, good Psalms 85, verse 11. The earth opened her mouth. And swallowed the flood. Who's the earth talking about? Psalms 85 and verse 11. Truth shall spring out of the earth. What'll come out of the earth? Truth shall spring out of the earth. And swallow up those lies. Go ahead. And righteousness shall look down from heaven. Give me um, Isaiah 59 verse 19. So who's responsible for that truth spinning out the earth? That same exceeding great army back in Ezekiel 37 and 10. Revelation 11, verse 11. That brought fear upon the nations when they saw them stand upon their feet. Isaiah 59, verse 19. Isaiah 59 and verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. The east. And his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood. Enemy shall what? When the enemy shall come in like a flood. His lies. Go ahead. The spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Swallow up the flood. Saying the exact same thing. The spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard. I mean, lift his Bible up ahead against them. And swallow up all the lies and deceits. Who, what spirit? The spirit of those same men in Revelation 11 verse 11 that stood upon their feet an exceeding great army. That's what it's talking about. You understand? Let's get definition of racism. Definition of racism. Uh, the belief that all members of each race possess characteristics or abilities specific to that race, especially as to distinguish, especially as to distinguish it as inferior or superior to another race or races. Prejudice, discrimination, antagonism directed against someone of a different race based on the belief that one's own race is superior. The KKK falls under this category based upon their hatred for us and our skin color. They feel we're inferior. We're imp superior to them because God says so. That's the difference. Uh, synonyms, racial discrimination, racialism. That's a new fancy word for racism. We don't even know that one. Racial prejudice, xenophobia, chauvinism, bigotry, casteism. Discrimination, racialism, xenophobia, chauvinism, bigotry. Keep those words in mind. Bigotry racial, and racism. Keep that in mind. Let's get um, Deuteronomy 7, verse 1. So basically it means a person that feels he's more superior based on his race. Deuteronomy 7, verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 1. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whither thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them. And utterly destroy them. So go in the land and destroy the nations out the land. Go ahead. Thou shalt These nations, go ahead. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Go ahead. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Racism. Go ahead. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. Go ahead. But thus shall he deal with them. He shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. That's called prejudice. When you are intolerant towards something. Go to prejudice real quick, please. 
We didn't negotiate with these Lebanese. We went in there, killed them out the land, didn't marry them, destroyed their images, destroyed their gods, give rise to prejudice in someone, make bias. Bias, influence, sway, predispose. We were biased against their gods. They also destroyed their gods, destroyed their idols. That's bias. Because Christianity would say to us, take the idols and our laws and mingle them together. God said, don't do that. Destroy their idols too. Don't keep that among us. There's bias in the scriptures as well. Don't deal with their gods. Don't deal with their people. Don't deal with their sons, their daughters. It's the same exact thing. It's the exact same thing. Bigotry, all the same thing. So when they accuse us of being prejudiced or racist, they're getting against God. The Lord don't deal with the other nations. He didn't give them no laws or commandments. That's bias. He didn't give them the chosen land. That's bias. He said we're above all people. That's racist. Don't marry other nations outside your own. That's racist. What Bible are these people reading? These heathens don't read the Bible because it's not for them. So they make up their own ideology. Thus the mask and the cross on sun on their face. Go back to it again. Deuteronomy 7 again. Deuteronomy 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Here you go. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Bias. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Racism. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth is a racist statement. He's declaring our superiority over everybody else. That's racist. Is it not? Am I making this up? Verse, uh, yeah, verse 14, go there. Verse 14. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. Bias. There, go ahead. Sh there shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. Go to white racism versus black racism. This is a sister named Joy DeGru, or formerly known as Joy Leary. She's going to explain the difference between black racism and white racism. Let's see what she says. Now, her audience she's speaking to is uh, having a forum here. She has a mixed um, audience. She has Edomites primarily, and you have Jake sprinkled among them. Let's see what she says here. Click that. How many people think they understand what racism is? Show of hands. Come on. You know, you, you, you think you know. I'm not suggesting I know. I just have a couple of definitions that, uh, that kind of came to me as I thought about it. How many people think there are white racists? That there are white racists out there? How many think there are black racists out there? Okay. Now, this is an interesting thing because this becomes important as we begin to define concepts. Now, I do that. I usually define concepts um, all, the, all the way. But one of the things that I, I do is I try to help people get a picture of what I mean by, by racism. So tell me how it is. I'm going to first category is white racism, then we'll deal with black racism. So white racism. Tell me the ways in which white racism adversely impacts the lives of black people. Just what are the ways that white racism can adversely impact the lives of black people as a group? What are some of those ways? I'm sorry? Power, but how is that defined specifically? Education, okay. I'm sorry? Economically employment. What else? Housing, what else? Policing, why are we here today? Healthcare, okay. Now, we could actually kind of grow that list. Now we're gonna move over to black racism. Tell me the ways in which black racism adversely impacts the lives of white people as an entire group. Thank you. The reason why you become silent, there's one that always comes up, and that's fear. White people are afraid of black people. They are afraid of us. And it's a very interesting thing, because black people know it. We know white people are afraid. But you have to start getting into the psychology. What are you afraid of? Why are you afraid? She's making it clear what that KKK guy said earlier. These guys are coming from everywhere. Niggers is everywhere. <laughs> Scary niggers, grab along. So real quick, just, just in a nutshell. I'm going to turn it to 305. Okay. Go ahead. No, we're on this part here. So when the white guy, when the, when, the, when the KKK member was making the point that he's afraid of what the black people are saying, you follow me? Because that is their fear. 
because Israel waking up. But in terms of you being black racist makes no sense at all because you don't control none of the things. That's what the question that she asked. She says, name something that black people can do that will adversely affect all white people. Nothing, because you're not in the power to do anything that will make new. Nothing that we say will change their housing situation. Nothing that we say will, will change anything in their lives. Them, on the other hand, they could do a whole lot of things that they do that affect us all as a group, mm -hmm. including lying on history, whitewashing history and all that. They had the power to do that. That's racist. Right. Based on their hatred for you. Exactly. Based upon their prejudice for you. But it's an interesting dynamic. Now, also you see the difference in what racism is, do you not? Racism implies you have not just prejudice, but the power to do something with that prejudice. Now, I don't like you, not only that, but I'm gonna control whether you can get, you know, I may say I hate you, I hate white people, I hate them, I hate them, it's not gonna change you getting that, you know, loan <laughs> when you go to the bank. You could go, you can hate, I can hate you all the way to the bank. Not gonna change. Do you see the difference? That whereas white racism says, not only do I not like you, but I'm going to change the, the impact of where you can live. I'm going to determine with that racism where, where your powers are. Are you following me? And I'm talking about as a group, not an individual, because people said, I remember when my uncle didn't. I'm not talking about your uncle. I'm talking about the whole group. I'm not talking about an incident. That's a difference. But white people are afraid. You see, I can watch the rest of that. This thing is good. But she broke it. As I asked her that question, at camp all the time. I'm racist. Yeah, and I asked the same question. No answer. So you, that's how you shut that nonsense down. Racism implies power. Racism is an act, not an opinion, not a feeling. It involves action. Go to um. I'll just mention this real quick. The same woman that was speaking up on the uh, screen. Right. This is the book that she wrote. The name of this book is called Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome. That's a book, right? Okay, this is the book that she wrote. I've been following this woman for years. I used to check out when she was do, do a lot of the things. Uh, Post-traumatic slave syndrome. Who caused, who caused blacks to have trauma? White folks. That's white power again. White racism again. Black people, they cause no white people to have no trauma. So y'all can understand. Y'all all right? Okay, this is the sister, Joy DeGru, who was formerly Joy Larry. Larry. Right. Go to the next one, Paul Mooney, please. Can black comedians be racist? A black person can't be racist by definition. Why is that? Because we don't have any control over people's lives. We can't, I can't tell you what neighborhood to live in. I can't tell you what school to go to. I can't tell you you're a second class citizen. I can't tell you that you can't vote. If I get on that corner and say, I, I get on that corner for five years and I stand there and I go, I'm going to take me a knife and I'm going to cut your throat and I'm going to take a car and I'm going to run you over and I'm going to take this hammer and I'm going to beat you till you dead. If I never kill anybody, am I a murderer? No. When I kill somebody, what does that make me? A murderer. I don't care what I talk about. I can talk about it all day long. All we do is talk. White folks do. White folks make laws. There's laws in the book. I'm from Louisiana. that said if you marry out of your race, you go to jail. You understand? There's laws that you can't own property. They made laws. Laws. You can't vote. You can't go to the school. You can't live in this area. You ain't never seen a sign that said, white boy, if you in this town when this sun goes down, we're going to hang you. Now have you. That's racism. A practice. What you preach. I hate that crap when they say that. It's like the race card. You're so worried about it. I'm worried about it. how in the hell did it get in the deck? And they brainwash everybody. They have a brainwashing machine that's unreal. That's why you can't catch a cab in New York. Because they think that you're the enemy. The color of your skin condemns you. That's why white people live eight years longer than we do. Because we have to put up with this crap. I go through it all the time. I get sick of it. I get sick of it. So once again, racism implies power to apply it to affect other races. Israel, the Mossad gave us laws and commandments to not do certain nations. We had power and authority above all else, not to intermingle with the other nations, not to uh, accept their gods or idols. We had power to pass laws that forced nations not to bring the idols around, around us, to flee from us. We had power like that, but it was in righteousness. 
These heathens have no damn. These heathens have power because God gave it to them because we broke his laws. So they have the right now to, to act the way they want, the way they feel. We did, we, we did what the most I told us to do. These heathens do it because they despise us. They hate our guts. But being racist, once again, implies power. You must have power in order to be racist. In order to, in order to declare yourself to be superior over other races, you must once again have power to execute that superiority over the other races. You understand? Second Ezra 655. Second Ezra chapter 6 and verse 55. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. The Lord made the world for our sakes. Once again, declaring our superiority over everybody else. Go ahead. As for the other people, which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing. Bias. You have said out of all those that come out of Adam, aside from the Israelites, other nations are nothing. Go ahead. But be like unto spittle. Like unto what? Spittle. That's, that's bias. That's bigotry. Go ahead. And has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. Not, roughless. Go ahead. And now, O Lord, behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. So these heathen were declared as nothing in the eyes of God. Leviticus 20, verse 24. So even though the Lord made Adam and Adam and his wife formed all the nations out of Noah, through Noah, the Lord said, yeah, yeah, that's nice, but these nations I prefer above all everybody else. That's racism. I give these commandments to only these people. That's bias. Don't, inter don't interracially marriage with those nations. That's racist. Read that. Leviticus 20, verse 24. But I have said unto you, ye shall inherit their land, and I will give it unto you to possess it, a land that floweth with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, which have separated you from other people. I have separated you from other people. Separated you from other people. Why? Because you're better than them. Why? Because I gave you my laws, and you are my people who I've chosen above everybody else. Go ahead. Ye shall therefore put difference between clean beasts and unclean, and between unclean fowls and clean. And ye shall not make your souls abominable by beast or by fowl or by any manner of living thing that creepeth on the ground, which I have separated from you as unclean. Next verse. And ye shall be holy unto me. Separate and clean unto me. Go ahead. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy, and have severed you from other people, that ye should be mine. Racist. I'm going to keep enforcing it throughout the class. These are racist statements. I have severed you from other people because you're mine. That's racist. Not anybody else, just you. You're above everybody else. He's declaring a superiority over everybody else. That, by definition, is racist. And you know why I can do that? Because God has power to do so. You understand that? Y'all clear? Sure. All right. Romans 3 verse, no, Psalms 147 verse 19. We go over this all the time. Psalms 147 verse 19. The book of Psalms 147 verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Verse 20 is the, is the kicker. He hath not dealt so with any nation. He hath not dealt so with any nation. Why? Why it, not share with everybody? This makes it bias. No, not you. Not you. I don't just give this law to you. Not you. No, not you either. Just them here. Go ahead. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. See that? So the most I said, out of all the nations, I'm going to give only this nation here my laws and commandments. And they have them above all nations in the process. Romans 3, verse 1. New Testament. The book of Romans, chapter 3 and verse 1. What advantage then hath the Jew? Well, what advantage has the Jew or the Israelite? Go ahead. Or what profit is there of circumcision? What profit is there of being an Israelite? Who gets circumcised? Go ahead. Much every way. Much in every way. So that means if there's an advantage, it must be a what? A disadvantage in not being one. Go ahead. Chiefly, 
Because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. That's the advantage we have over everybody else, which is racist and biased once again. Mainly, cheaply. cheaply means specifically. Because the word of God was given to you and only you. And he has not dealt so with any other nation. That makes it an advantage. Because no one else has that advantage. Now the most I said, for you keep breaking my laws, I'm going to flip it now. Now you're disadvantaged and they're advantaged over you. They can be racist over you now. You understand? Is this is that clear? Deuteronomy 33 29. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33 and verse 29. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee? Right, no one. Go ahead. O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help. And who is the, wor and who is the sword of thy excellency? And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee. Enemy shall be found what? Liars unto thee. Our enemies shall be found liars unto us. And you're going to find that out thoroughly tonight. Go ahead. And thou shalt tread upon their high places. Right. When the kingdom come, we're going to tread on their high places and take this planet over. Because the world was made for us and only us. Period. Second Maccabees 5. I mean, um, Second Maccabees 15. After this scripture, we're going to take a break. quick break. 2 Maccabees 15, verse 7. I'm going to say the exact same thing. The book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 15, and verse 7. But Maccabeus had ever sure confidence that the Lord will help, would help him. Go ahead. Wherefore, he exhorted his people not to fear the coming of the heathen against them. As we should have that same confidence tonight, today, and forever, to the Lord cometh. The confidence the heathen come against us, there should be no fear in our eyes. Can I read again? Wherefore he exhorted his people not to fear the coming of the heathen against them, but to, rem but to remember the help which in former times they had received from heaven, and now to expect the victory and aid which should come unto them from the Almighty. Yeah. And so comforting them out of the law and the prophets, and withal putting them in mind of the battles that they won afore, he made them more cheerful. So Maccabees encouraged our people to stand strong and don't show any fear against these nations coming against them. Go ahead, watch this. And when he had stirred up their minds. I'm sorry, Moses said, and comfort them out of the law and the scriptures. He comforted them out of the law and the prophets. That's where the comfort comes from. Our comfort in this captivity, our comfort when the enemies come against us, comes out of this Bible. Comfort out of the law. And the prophets. Go ahead. And when he had stirred up their minds, he gave them charge, showing them therewithal the falsehood of the heathen and the breach of oaths. And their constant lies and betrayals against us. He showed them the falsehood of the heathen. Proved them to be what? Liars. And the fault and the breach of oaths. As you know, on this side of the world, they broke how many laws, treaties, uh, treaties against our 400 and something treaties against our brothers on this side of the world. How many do they keep? None. So why trust their religion then? That makes no damn sense. It's asinine to think that. They haven't changed. That Ku Klux member right guy you saw on that screen, them, them guys you saw hanging on the tree, those are his grandfathers. He descends from those men. But we're going to clear up the falsehood of the heathen tonight. All right, so Genesis 42 and verse 6. We're going to start with Joseph. Now, the doctrine, now the rumor is that uh, these uh, pathetics, that the Egyptians in some fantasy world of Harry Potter, maybe, I don't know, were white, and the Jews or the Hebrews, is Israelites, which Joseph was an Israelite, descendant of, of Israel, Jacob, was white. Okay, so we're going to read about Joseph first. Genesis 42, verse 6. The book of Genesis, chapter 42 and verse 6. And Joseph was the governor over the land. And he, and he it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. And Joseph saw his brethren, and he knew them, but made himself strange unto them, and spake roughly unto them. And he said unto them, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. Yeah. And Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew not him. So Joseph recognized his brothers. He saw them. They didn't recognize him. Why didn't they recognize him? Because he was dressed like an Egyptian. 
He had a clean shaven, makeup, whatever. So he was, they couldn't they didn't recognize him, right? Jump, no, he recognized them. Jump down to verse, mm, read on, read on. Verse, verse 9. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them and said unto them, Ye are spies, to seek the nakedness of the land, ye are come. Yeah. And they said unto him, Nay, my lord, but to buy food are thy servants come. Go ahead. So he accused him of stealing. Go ahead. We are all one man's sons. We are true men. Thy servants are no spies. And he said unto them, Nay, but to see the nakedness of the land, ye are come. Go jump to verse 20. Verse 20. But bring your youngest brother unto me, so shall your words be verified, and ye shall not die. And they did so. Go ahead. And they said one to another, We are verily guilty concerning our brother, in that we saw the anguish of his soul when we besought us. When he besought us. When he besought us. And we would not hear. Therefore is this distress come upon us. What's happened to us now, we deserve it because they sold him into slavery. So remember, the point of this is that they're having a dialogue with Joseph. They're looking at him. They're talking. It's not through some wall. They're talking to him directly. Go ahead. And Reuben answered them, saying, Spake I not unto you, saying, Do not sin against the child, and you would not hear. Therefore, behold, all his blood is required. Whatever happens to us is our own fault for starting into slavery. Go ahead. And they knew not that Joseph understood them. Go ahead. For he spake unto them by an interpreter. So they're, talk he's so the they're talking to his interpreter in Hebrew. He's translating it to Joseph in Egyptian. And then Joseph speaking Egyptian, speaking to the interpreter. He's talking to him in Hebrew. So they're having a dialogue. Now, here's the question. Why don't they recognize Joseph among Egyptians? Shalom. It was all black. It was all the same skin color. Say again? It was all black. Thank you. Because he looked like an Egyptian. Because he looked like an Egyptian. He passed for an Egyptian. They didn't recognize him. And he looked like the Egyptians. Y'all understand? Because if he was a white boy... And Egyptians, let's say Egyptians are black and the Jews and Hebrews are white. You recognize a white boy dressed in Egyptian clothing. Like Eminem, dressed like, like us. You know he, oh, he's black. No, you know he's not black. That's a white boy dressed like a Negro. So likewise, they recognize their brother. Hey, look at that, that shaven dude. Joseph? They would recognize them. That would be clear. But they didn't recognize him because he looked like the Egyptians. He spoke to them by an interpreter. He's speaking to them in Egyptian. He's speaking to his interpreter in Egyptian. And the, and the interpreter is translating what he's saying to them in their language and vice versa to him. Let me help them out. If Joseph was white man, it wouldn't have matter what kind of clothes he put on. It wouldn't have matter what kind of language interpretation. They would have recognized that he was not Egyptian. They would have recognized that. Mm -hmm. See what I'm talking about? Got to get the cells together, get the brains moving. Go ahead. Let's prove it. Joseph was a black man. The name of this book is entitled Our Living Bible, put together by the biblical scholars of this society. This is the picture here. Now, remember what it says. It says Joseph was governor in Genesis 42, verse 6. He was governor. What did that say, Captain Isaac? So Joseph found favor in his sight and attended him, and he made him overseer of his house. The blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and field. See that? Painting from the tune of no, of not 15th century BC. BC. See that? That's Joseph's status from worker there to governor. So Sit where there. so where's Joseph in the picture? Huh? The one sitting on the throne up there. Y'all see him? That's Joseph because he's over Egypt. That's what you're looking at. That's Joseph there. Yep. Look at look at look at him. Black. Look at that dark color on him. You get white from there. <laughs> There's no red there. No off white. None of that. That's a brown man. That's Joseph. And guess what? If Joseph looked like that, guess what looked like that? His brothers too, and his dad and his mom. Okay. That's called common sense. Let's go to now. We're gonna deal with Mo is Exodus two verse fifteen. Now we're gonna deal with Moses. Because remember, Joseph was an Israelite, and so was Moses. He was one too. Let's see what maybe maybe his color changed. So where are we going now? Exodus two, verse fifteen. 
the book of Exodus, chapter 2, verse 15. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses, but Moses fled from the... Matt, no, no, let's go to the movie first. Go to the clip first. Okay. Let's go to the Second Commandments clip first. Okay, now we... There we go. How long is the clip? Uh, we'll we just get right to it. Yeah, this, it ain't clean. Yeah. long. All right. long. We're going to go to the movie with Charlton, with Charleston Heston. Charlton Heston. The, called the, the, the Ten Commandments. We watched this earlier today, too. Right. So let me give you all some, let me give you a, a little background. Moses, Mo, this is Moses, this is the movie about Moses going and he conquered the Ethiopian king. And he's going to bring it to the Egyptian king, Pharaoh, up on the, up on the, uh, on the wall. Now, this was actually filmed in Cairo, Egypt, so you can understand. Mm -hmm. This is the actual palace. This is this is not backdrop Hollywood. This is actually filmed in Cairo, Egypt. Okay, Sissa B. DeMille, he actually took his cameras and all that stuff over there and filmed this, so you can understand what it's talking about. Go. The Lord Moses, Prince of Egypt, son of the Pharaoh's sister, beloved of the night Commander of the Sovereign Host. Welcome home. Only the name of the Lord. The blessings of the God Amon Ra be upon you, great prince. He has brought down the pride of Ethiopia. He has set his the old wind bag. He has raised Egypt to its feet. I agree with it. May your name Exalted on earth, O conqueror, even as the sun is exalted in the heaven. Now that's Seti, that's Set right there. Seti, the first right there, and next to him, the woman is Nepatiri. Keep her in mind. The woman next to him is, I think it's his daughter. Nepatiri, all right? Okay. Yeah. Welcome to my sister's son. We have heard how you took Ibis from the Nile to destroy the venomous serpents used against you when you laid siege to the city of Saba. May my arms stay strong in your service, great city. Who is this fair young god come into the house of Pharaoh? No need to tell you how I share her joy at your return. No need, my brother. Great one, I bring you Ethiopia. What color are the Ethiopians? Why didn't they now, and who are the Egyptians in the picture? The white ones. Can we read the Bible dictionary, please? Just for a second. Yeah, I said, you can go there now. Yeah, I have to go there. Have to go there. The white man's now, lies. Now, I mind you, they, <laughs> they, 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 they the pathetics teach that we descend from, the, from them, Cushites. First, in slavery, we were Canaanites. Right. Now they, now they remixed it now. Now we're Cushites now. Mm. And this, these are Cushites. Ethiopia is Cush. So they're saying that that's us there, and he's teaching that that's them, white folks. That's them there. So they're pushing the same nonsense agenda this movie pushed the years ago it was made. The same exact thing in 2017. Pushing the exact same thing. Egyptians is white, and you Negroes were Cushites or Nubians. Yeah. You got it? Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes. Not the Negroes, but he said, what, is, what did it say about Ham? Read it again. He became the progenitor of the dark races. Hold on, y'all see this here? It says, Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of the eight persons that lived through the flood, Ham, that's what the he is, he became the father, the word progenitor means father, of the dark races. So these are the dark races that came out of Ham. But then he first starts off by saying, not the Negroes. So Ham was not the Negroes' father. So Ham did not come, I mean, the Negroes did not come out of Ham. That's what the first thing that the scholar sets aside. He removes the Negroes from the whole seed of Ham, period. Right. So you so-called Negroes are not Hamitic at all. 
You didn't come from the seed of Shem, I mean, from the seed of Ham at all. Right. But now he's going to tell you who came out of this, out, out of one of the, of the dark races. He was the father of the dark races. Now let's name the dark races. Go ahead. But the Egyptians? So the Egyptian is a dark race. Ethiopians. Ethiopians is a dark race. Libyans. Libyans, the, the, the Africans in the north part of Africa. Go ahead. And Canaanites. And the Canaanites, the South Africans. Do you see that? So now, let's go back to the film. No, no, hold on. Okay. Something else. Get what I sent you to Cambridge? Okay. Now, this is what was used in, the, in their video. He, I don't know why he read this for. This, this was in the, this was in, what's in the name? Yeah, he used to say, we're, we're, we're Cushites. It says, okay. Cush in Hebrew and Ethiopia. Cush is the name in Hebrew. Ethiopia is the name in Greek. Designate the land and people of the upper Nile River from modern southern Egypt into Sudan. The more indigenous term for this region is Nubia. Ham is another Hebrew term for the darker hued people. Hold it. Of antiquity. Wait a minute. He said what? Ham, Ham is another Hebrew term for the dark people. The darker hued people color. of antiquity. In Genesis 10, Ham is the son of Noah who populates Africa. So if his children populated Africa and they're dark hued people, who the hell are we seeing in this movie? Now let's go That's back to the movie. That's their confusion. Y'all all right? They used this against us. I don't know what the hell they was doing that for. I don't get it. Good now, the whiteness. Let's go back to the movie now. Go back to the clip that we were looking at. So tell me this. How in the world are they going to have up on the stage the, the, the Ethiopians and the Egyptians are blood brothers? They both come from Ham. Mm -hmm. Why is it that they got the Egyptians as white people when they said that their, both their father was Ham, black? But Esau and Jacob is, is, is madness, being black and white. One's white. That's possible. Right. But Esau and Jacob right. is, is, is fallacious. Right. Exactly. Did y'all okay. get that? But we read out of the dictionary that it said what? He became the father of the dark races, and then it named them. It said the Egyptians. So why do they have white folks here? You want to know why? Because they wanted to say that Moses passed for white to make him white as well. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? That's the evil that these people have done. But they couldn't lie about the Ethiopians because too many people would have woke up. Do you to try to make the Ethiopians white? But wait a minute. Yep. We got the Cambodia, the people starving with the big belly and all that. Mm -hmm. We know that that's black people. So you can't lie about them. You mean burnt face. You follow me? Right so no, they wouldn't have gotten away with that. But they said, well, we can lie about the Egyptians because don't, people don't really know the history. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand how these people get down. You all follow me? Now, now you see the woman that's sitting beside him. That's Nefertiri. Did y'all see that when they called it? They called her name in this in this clip. Did y'all see that? Yeah. Or maybe did they? Did they say her name? It don't matter. Okay. It don't matter. But that's who that is. Yeah, put it okay. side by side. That's put, good. Side by side. Man, now, now, let's see what it says. Night How y'all like that? Night and day. How y'all like that? What did it say there, Isaac? How graceful are your feet in sandals, O queenly maiden? Queen Amos Nefertiri. 13th century B.C. on painting, Deir el Medina, Egypt. So you see that? So Nefertiri, which was an Egyptian, meaning that Pharaoh was supposed to look like her. Mm -hmm. So you can understand. And if Pharaoh looked like her and Moses passed for an Egyptian, that meant that Moses was supposed to look like this as well. Right. Y'all see that? And if Moses looked like this, that means Joseph, like we showed earlier, looked like, looked like this, meaning all the Israelites are dark people. Damn. They know we had these books. Stop talking about us. Or we're going to destroy you. Where's more? Nepotary. Night and day. That's complete whitewashing right there. Madness. So the Egyptians were black, dark hued people. Everyone understand that? Yes, sir. All right. It's written on their own walls. <laughs> hey, but that movie that we're watching right there, that's white supremacy. Yep. You understand? That's what that is. You understand? That's what Christianity is based on, white supremacy. You understand? If you try anything great, they try to say it's them. Mm -hmm. You know, they read about the Egyptians. The Egyptians was a great people. That's why you got a lot of Negroes running around that they're trying to be Egyptians. Because at one point in time, they was a great people. Mm -hmm. You understand? The, the, so the Egyptians was great. Guess what the white man say? 
We were the Egyptians. You understand? Christ, another great man. Moses, another great man. The white man said, these is our people because guess yeah, what? I am. Guess what? If the white man, if Esau, if they say, okay, Moses was a black, was a dark-skinned man, or they admit that, that we are Israelites, you know what they're saying? You know what Esau is saying if he admit that Moses was dark-skinned or, or he admit that we are the original Israelites? You know what he's going, he's literally admitting that, that, that he the devil the Bible speaks of. You understand? And he's admitting that he's going to be judged for what he did. Because if we are the Israelites, and he did all, if we are God's people, the Israelites, and he know in his heart he hate us, and all that evil he did to us, he, he know that there is a God. You understand? And he know judgment is going to come to him. That's why in his mind, he will never, he will never say that we are the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And any white, any dark image that you got set up, he going to say, he going to destroy it. Hide or try to hide it from us, and he's gonna always push that lie that Jesus was white, the Egyptians is white. You know, he's gonna push that white supremacy. But it's up to you, it's up to you all to see beyond that lie, man. It's up to you all. Right. 215. Exodus 215. Thank you. Now, when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. Because Moses killed an Egyptian, so he ran. Go ahead. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. And he sat down by a well. Go ahead. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, mm -hmm. and they came and drew water and filled the trolls to water their father's flock. Mm -hmm. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them mm -hmm. and yeah. watered their flock. Go ahead. And when they came to Ruel, their father, he, AKA Jethro. Go ahead. he said, how is it that ye are come so soon today? Watch this. And they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. These women were Ethiopians. They would have known whether or not Moses was either an Egyptian or a Hebrew if he were a white Hebrew. Because Ethiopians and Egyptians are what? Relatives. They said Moses, an Egyptian has come to help us at the, at the well. So they confused Moses with what? Moses was raised as a what? How did the cherry look? Like a what? Like a black woman. So how is how he raised in the house of Pharaoh with a woman that dark unless he had to pass for, unless he had to pass for her child? You understand? Yes, sir. So obviously Moses was a black man. Let's get chapter, uh, chapter 4, verse. Verse 6. Yeah, verse 6, yeah. Ch Exodus 4, verse 6. And the Lord said, furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. So he told Moses, put your hand inside your bosom. And, you're gone. And, he okay. put, and he put it, and he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. His hand was, came out white. Go ahead. And he said, put thine hand into thy bosom again. Put your hand back into your shirt again, your garment again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. What's the other flesh? Black flesh. It's the opposite. Other is the opposite of white. Leprous is snow. It's the opposite. Not the same. What miracle would that be? Put a white hand in your garment, come out as white again. Right, and leprous... Yo, your, your hand is white again. What's the real cool on that? A white hand is a whiter hand? Was he powder? So taught it. Right, yeah. and also on leprosy ain't talking about sores. It's talking about you losing your pigment in your, pigment in your skin. That's what leprosy is. Yep. You know, when you go to... Um, when you read about Miriam, you getting that? No, I wasn't getting when that. When you read about Miriam, remember what the Mosai hit her with leprosy too. He said that she looked like one that was dead. Yep. You understand? Yep. Because when somebody dead, you know how they look pale. Mm -hmm. There's no pigment in their skin. Mm -hmm. So that's what lepro le leprosy is. Right. You know, because you know the, the same dude, he talk about the leprosy and talk about sores. Yeah. You know, yeah. Job had leprosy, and guess what? The most also smite him with sores. Yeah. You understand? It wasn't just leprosy Job had. The most I just also smite him with sores. Yeah. You understand? So... Losing, have, having leprosy is skin. losing your pigment in your skin. Esau calls it vitiligo. Can, can he he changed that? the entire definition around. Can I read it real quick? What he quoted with um, numbers? 
Real quick, it's only two verses. Yeah. We're in Numbers chapter 12, verse 11. This is when the Most High plagued Miriam yeah, for okay. running her mouth against Moses when because Lord he married the Ethiopian the woman. So the Lord called them, all three of them, to the temple, and he plagued uh, Miriam with leprosy. He said, And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not this sin upon us where we have done foolishly and where we, in, we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. So the Most High stripped the pigment from her. Because when you, hey, when you see, sometimes you see Edomites, right? Like, especially when the place real cold, some of them, they look pale, real pale. You understand? They look, you look at them, you don't, you don't even see the, you, they, they, you don't even see the red, and some of them look pale like they dead. Hey, let's, you understand? Even, let's even use the analogy if he said, when he said, um, let her not be as one dead of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. You people in here that have dark-skinned children, you see how they are when they're first born? And then as their melanin sets in, the baby gets its regular complexion. It's very dark. You see the baby when it comes out. It's very, very light. Okay? And that's what he was describing here. When the melanin was stripped from her skin, and she looked with that pale skin. Okay? That's why he gave the analogy of a baby when it comes out. The parents could be dark but when that baby comes out because that color hasn't set in. That's what he described Miriam to. Person with no color. Go to Exodus 4 and 2. Exodus 4 and 2. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground. And it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand. Hold it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Continue reading. Stay. Go ahead. And put forth the hand and do what? And take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. Now, the reason why I had this read is because Deacon Malachi was correct when he said that this movie was about white supremacy. Y'all listening? Because they showed that miracle in the movie. Show it to them. Just show the clip so they can see. You found the part? Play it. Let my people go. The slaves are mine lives are mine all that they own is mine I do not know your God nor will I let Israel go who are you to make their lives bitter in hard bondage man shall be ruled by law not by the will of other men who is this God that I should let your people go Aaron Cast down my staff before Pharaoh, that he may see the power of God. In this you shall know that the Lord is God. Over here, it said this part of the movie, correct? Read it again, and then read on. Exodus 4 and 2. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. So let me, guess you, let me give you some understanding. What we're reading here happened before this scene here with the Pharaoh, so you can understand. But the fact that they brought it back to the time of Pharaoh, why didn't they bring this next part out? Read the next piece. And the Lord, verse 6, And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. Hold it. If they would have put that in the movie, too many of you would have woke up. So they said, don't put that in there. Mm -hmm. Get that out. Because if Moses would have been white, just like you said earlier, mm -hmm. what would have been the miracle? Yep. And too many of you said, wait, wait, wait a minute, he was black in his hand. The, the Israelites are black. No, they said, no, don't do that. Just get that whole scene out. Mm -hmm. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. this, is, this is what the brother just read earlier about he told Moses to put his hand into his bosom, and when he pulled it out, his hand was leprous. Then he told him to put it back into his bosom again, and it came out his, uh, just like his Normal other flesh, flesh, meaning the rest of his body. Did y'all get that? 
So the miracle was his hand turning white. That's the point. So why they didn't put that in the movie? Because they wanted you to think Moses was white completely, period. Mm -hmm. Lies. Y'all got that? But a lie go ahead call it. They turn leprosy. The most high calls it leprosy. Yep. I don't know what leprosy. this mess they got in the hospital. No, the, the most high call it leprosy. Now there's another book called <laughs> The Black Image in the White Mind. The debate on Afro-American character and destiny. Now, 1817, where were we? Okay. To 1914, fighting for what? Trying to fight for rights and so forth. So we had we were still damn near slaves in their mind all throughout this time here. So this is two, this goes into the history of, uh, of uh, I'll, just, I'll just read to y'all. It's page uh, 74 and 75. Yes, sir. Page 74, the black image in the white mind. Right. The originator of the new scientific ethnology was Dr. Samuel George Morton of Philadelphia, who published a book in 1839. Ethnology is a science of races. Ethnology. Ethnicity, ethnology. Go ahead. Who published a book in 1839 that promised to bring an end to loose speculation about racial origins and differences by opening an era of hard-headed empirism. Regarding where blacks come from. Go ahead. Morton's Crania Americana was so the... So Crania, Amer Crania Americana, he studied the skull. Remember the movie Django, where Candy had the skull of Ben? So these guys dealt with that science. Skulls of Negroes. Crania Americana, the American skull, basically. Skull of Americans or African Americans. Go ahead. Was the result of years of collecting and examining human skulls. Ours. Go ahead. As he gathered and studied the crania of different types of men... Morton became aware of the differences between white, Indian, and Negro skulls and of the fact that the ancient crania from a given race did not seem to differ from those of their modern descendants. Yeah. Morton concluded that the races had always had the same physical characteristics and by implication the same mental qualities. In the 1840s, Morton collaborated with George R. Glidden, an Egyptologist who provided him with mummy heads and information about the racial significance of Egyptian tomb inscriptions. Stop. So now he decides to, to um, cooperate with an, with an Egyptian craniologist. He's an American craniologist. This guy does the skulls of Egyptians. You understand? Y'all follow so far? These two Edomites, working, during the time we were slaves, these Edomites are working together to figure out the origin of black folks. So he dealt with a, he went to a, a craniologist of Egyptians, the, those, the, the tombs and so forth. Go ahead. In crania e egyptica. In cranio egyptica. That's his Greek for uh, whatever. Egyptian, Egyptian skulls. Go ahead. Published in 1844, Morton pointed out that both cranial and archaeological evidence showed that the Egyptians were not Negroes. Stop. Because they thought we were. Why? What they saw on the walls. Nefertiti. Oh, they're Egyptians. But they realized, based on their studies, we're not Egyptians. Just like Zonovan said. Just like Cambridge said. Go ahead. As abolitionists and... Colon colonialists, colonialists, colonialists had maintained. As they thought. They thought, oh, they, we're all Africans. They said, nah, we're wrong about that. Go ahead, watch this. And that, in fact, blacks had been relegated to the same servile position in ancient Egypt as in modern America. Do you understand what you just heard? Yeah, you Read it again. And that, in fact, Blacks in and fact, stop, just stay alone. In fact, what they've learned, not based on their assumptions, Go ahead. but in fact, they learn what? Blacks. Blacks? Had, had, been, had been relegated to the same servile position. To the same servile position. In ancient Egypt. In Egypt. As in modern America. White folks will read that and they'll understand that the Negroes are the Jews. That's what they will read, but we... With this African trip and all this madness, we be still talking some foolishness. That's what that book just told you, that they know that you are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. So the reason, now I know the reason why you brought it up, because I didn't read that. I didn't know about that. Hey. That backs up what's read in the Zondervan Bible Dictionary clearly. And it also backs this up. Read that hey. next. Hey, Hold it. Let me bring up one point before you move on from there. Go to Deuteronomy, 20, Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And then jump to verse 46. Because what they say, you're going to hear, this is the new doctrine you're going to hear. The new doctrine is that slavery took, part, took place in the time of the Romans. Right? But get that and read it real quick. Deuteronomy oh, yeah. 28 and 68. 
then jump to verse 46. Jump back to verse 46. We're going to the prove them apologetics lie because we just, we just read that, read what, it, what, what that book said, right? It says that the, the, the slave share in America, right, it ha- went through the same bondage as the slave in Egypt. They had the same gland in their skull, right? Oh, it's the same people. It's the same people. Right? So read that. Deuteronomy 28, 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. When it says Egypt here, all right, the word Egypt here is synonymous to bondage or the house of bondage. All right? It doesn't literally mean the ancient Egypt because they said when the Romans came against us, they took us back into Egypt as slaves again. But this is not what this is talking about. All right? Read on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. And no man shall buy us, meaning no man shall save us. All right, now, now even if they say, okay, even if they say, okay, this happened in the time of the Romans, it ain't talking about the slaves and them, what took part, what took place in the 1600s. Go read verse 46. Verse 46, and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. So... So the, so the scripture says that the curse is going to be upon us for what? A sign and for a wonder. For a sign. For a sign for us to know who we are today. And a wonder for us to wonder why these things happen to us. So these curses are going to be upon us for a sign and a wonder. Read on. And upon thy seed forever. And upon the Israelite seed forever. So guess what? We, gonna, we just read that the children of Israel are going to go into Egypt on ships, right? Guess what? That didn't happen one time. That didn't happen two times. That didn't happen three times. It's something that happened over and over and over and over and over. You understand? Every time a nation rose up and came into power, they took the Israelites as slaves. You know? When you read about the Babylonians, the Babylonians, they came and they, and they took us into slavery, right? Guess what? They probably sent some of, us, some, some of us on ship too. You know, when you read about the Persians, they came and took us as slaves. Guess what? A lot of our forefathers had to go to the Su- to, um, Sushan all the way to Elam. Guess what? They probably took us over there on ships too. Same thing with the Greeks, the Romans. But guess what? This is the last time it's going to happen. Right. You understand? This, this time when they brought us here in America, this is the last slavery that we're going to ever go through. This is the last time we're going to be taken in slavery on slave ships. So, yes, this prophecy right here belongs to us. All right? And it is ha- talking about what happened in the 1600s. So you all don't listen to those lying demons, man. Apologetics. They don't understand the Bible. Because imagine if they say, you know what? This right here is really talking about the Negroes. <laughs> you understand? You understand if they admit that what's going to happen? So that's why they got to find ways to, to make this don't be true in your eyes. You understand? April 68, please. Now, the guy in the video, man, she read a revised version Bible. Mm-hmm. Um, Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. He read this. Read that right there. Right. Read your Bible, too. It's in this Catholic Bible here. This is a Catholic Bible, mm-hmm. the uh, Tyndale in, uh, Catholic Living Bible, illustrated. Yeah, the, Tyndale, the it's, revised, it's still a revised version regardless. It's revised, right, it's revised. 68, go ahead. Right, it's a paraphrased Bible, that's what they call it. Mm-hmm. It says, this is verse 68, Deuteronomy 28. Then the Lord will send you back to Egypt in ships. Mm-hmm. A journey I promise you would never need to make again. And there you will offer to sell yourselves to your enemies as slaves. But no one, no, but no one will even want to buy you. So the guy goes, "See, you didn't offer yourselves in slavery. They took you as slaves." So that's not talking about you. That's what he said. Now get the what you want to get. What it says in that same Bible regarding us in that same book. So now about going back to the Ham and Genesis. Yep. It says, as there's a footnote at the bottom of the page. It says Ham was not the ancestor of the Negro as was once erroneously supposed. Wow. <laughs> Same book. Same book. Yeah. Is Ham was not the ancestor of the Negro, as was Erroneous. once erroneously supposed. Being wrong. 
Wrong. In we were fact, wrong as hell. That's what they say. Right. We were wrong as hell. But in fact, we were relegated to the same condi- serve our conditions in Egypt as they were in America. That's what they're saying, the exact same thing. Do y'all understand that? Yes, I am. Do y'all understand that? Yes, sir. All right. Let's get um, BibleArchaeology.org. I want that. That's a picture of Egyptians doing work on the walls. Those are Egyptians. It's this tomb of Mena, Thebes, circa 1420 B.C. Those are Egyptians um, dealing with, um, with grain. See that? Moses passed for that. You saw Nefertiti, how dark she was, right? So where are the Egyptians white at? Where are they white? This is black. These are Egyptians on the wall. Scroll a little bit higher. Go bring it down so you can see the top. See the feet? Look at the feet. These are their feet. Then you see, their, then you see the whole body as you go further down. Well, that's not the same thing, but different picture. But on the bottom there, too. That's all Egyptians there. Where are the white Egyptians? They came during the time of the Greeks, during Ptolemaic dynasty. Ptolemaic dynasty, the Greeks became pharaohs. Then the Romans became pharaohs to put their own images up there and whitewash them and so forth and knock the noses off, like the Sphinx, to push their supremacist, white supremacist agenda because racism requires power. Black folks can't walk around blackwashing white images. We can't do that. We haven't done that. We, we lack the power to do that. Y'all understand? Let's go to um, the video I sent you on YouTube. So there's the, there's the you got clip it? for the brothers to see what we read out of the book. Okay, there it goes. Blow it up more so you can see it. See that? Ham is not the ancestor of the Negro as was erroneously supposed. So they taught that to us in slavery. You're, Ham, you're Canaan. You're black. That's a curse of Canaan, curse of Ham. Mm-hmm. Now, they're saying, uh, now they're saying to us now, oh, you're, son, you're, you're Nubians, you're Cushites. It's the same damn thing. It's just a remix. He said, you're Hamite. He said in the video, we're Hamitic Gentiles. That's what he said. That's, that's the same thing as that right there. Same exact thing. You're supposed to be slaves. That's what they're saying to us. What he does also, he finds some, some pictures that look real horrible and, and try to say, that, you see that? That's how you all really look the back then. You understand? Yeah. Destroy the, the image and the psyche of us. Yep. Oh, yes, yes. Show them that, please. You got that, that, that too? I sent you the, the check the, uh, from the book, The Icons. The Icons. Written by who? Show them from. Show them the cover, that. Surely we're lying. The Icon. <laughs> by who? By the Evans brothers. That was the first group that made it. But it's put together by a team yeah, of yeah. Uh, scholars. Right. Book uh, called The Icon. Let's see what's, in, let's see what's found in this like book. Seven, it's like... Sections of it is put together by different scholars. Yep. We're going to see how these biblical figures were factually depicted in paintings in early Europe, where we ruled for over a thousand years. Y'all see what you y'all see what y'all see here? Now I'm going to show you. Hold it now. I'm going to, I'm going to guide you through the pictures. Now, I got, now, that picture on the left, the, the, the Christ and his mother. That's whitewashed. I have the actual image of my house. Oh. They're dark as night. There we uh, go. Well, there's a section in the book, right? here. Okay, he's got it there. So y'all see it's the same picture, right? I just sent it to him. The prophet Moses is up at the top holding the burning bush. In the left. Right, that one there. Zoom in so they can see him. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Can you see the woolly hair on his head? Look at his face. Okay. Don't tell me that they didn't have color to make him white if he was white. Look at the, look at the picture around the skin. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they got, look at the garment that he's wearing. Man, them garments was out of sight. Look at that thing. Damn. Look at that thing. Okay, now let's get the wording. Move down. Let's zoom in on the words there. What does it say down there at the bottom? Above it says, detail prophet Moses. Yep. Can y'all see that? So when it says above, so go back above, move it up. The a prophet Moses. That's King David on the other side yep. there. They That's say, King David on say, that side. Because yeah. the darkness, oh, he was ruddy. Right. Yeah, ruddy brown, you lying bastards. Okay. So you got King, you got Moses, and you got David. Mm-hmm. Now. And we showed you Joseph. Who that right there in the bottom? 
That's Andrew. Oh, that's Andrew. That's one of the Prophet apostles. Andrew. One right. of the apostles. One of the apostles, Andrew. Another Jew. Right. And they wanted to start lightening him up. See his hands. Look at his face. And he said, why did his right. hands out? Look at his up. face. All right. So Go let's to, move on, because I don't want I, I want Deacon Ithon to get all this stuff out. Go to the video. I sent you about because um, like like you said, this is warning shots. I ain't got to. I ain't got to go too deep nope. now. But if you start some crap again, we are gonna tear your behind up. Even worse. Go ahead. You got more than this. You go there. Just uh, blow, yeah, blow that up. So you know we're not making this up on the walls. Press play. In the very beginning is very short. We know from the Bible that the Israelites arrived in Egypt some two hundred years before their exodus. In the original Hebrew, the Bible calls the Israelites God's people, or Amo Israel. If we write about our dates, there should be hard archaeological evidence for the arrival of these Amo around 1700 BCE. kilometers south of Avaris is the tomb at Beni Hassan. It dates to 1700 BCE. Because no one has looked for evidence of the Exodus in this period, the tomb has never been linked to the biblical story. Into Egypt from the area of modern Israel. in the Bible, the scene involves bearded Semites riding donkeys and bringing their families and flocks into Egypt. Like the biblical Israelites, they are wearing multicolored tunics. The hieroglyphic inscription on this wall calls these people the Amo, God's people. Looking in the right place, during the right time, we are the first to recognize a veritable snapshot of the migration of the biblical Israelites to Egypt. Black on the walls. So that's it. Can't hide it. Can't, can't hide this. Let's go to, um, uh, what now? Okay, I'll go to this. Nature Knows the Color Line by J. Rogers. Where's my book at? How y'all brothers and sisters feel about this information that we're bringing out tonight? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Still can't hear you. All right. All praises. All praises. Page 123. Start at White's. White says. This is Nature Knows No Color Line by J.A. Rogers. What page is it? Page 123. 123. The bottom paragraph. All right. White says an interesting gradation of all shades down to the black is exhibited by the Jews. So this guy, what happened while well, Jay Rogers is giving us different um, scholars takes on how the colors of the Jews. This guy says they went from real white to black, which is false. So watch this. Especially dark were the Jews of Spain and Portugal. So that, that clears it up. Go ahead. The Portuguese Jews were very dark, says Pritchard. The Duchess de Ambertes, wife of Napoleon's ambassador to Portugal, said that the Jew, the Negro, and the Portuguese could be seen in a single person. Can be what? Can be seen in a single person. They all look the same. Jew and the Negro. The Portuguese, Israel, inhabited a lot of Portugal. Can be seen as the same person. Go ahead. So dark were the Jews. There you go. Go ahead. Especially of Portugal and southern Spain. This is, the, this is before the time of the Spanish Inquisition. We fled over there. Go ahead. That many whites thought all Jews were black or dark. Many whites thought what now? Back all then? Jews were black or dark. So what happened now? Slavery happened. You shall discontinue from your heritage. Now no one knows. We're but it was the- known back then. Go ahead. This belief, said Burbot, shows what an error most people are in. Since he says, the German Jews, as for example, those of Prague, are as white as most of so, their German countrymen. So this guy gives an argument. No, they're white. They argue back and forth. Many of the Jews who were banished from Portugal by John II. John II. Yeah, that's the king. John II, he, he banished us during the time of the Spanish Inquisition. 
they were kicking us out of Spain. So Portugal was nice to us at that time. So we fled to Portugal. And this guy, to please the queen of Spain, started kicking us out also. So John II, go ahead. Many of the Jews who were banished from Portugal by John II, go ahead. Settled in the West Indies. Settled where? In the West Indies. Jamaica, go ahead. John Bigelow, who visited Jamaica in 1850. What year? In 1850. Go ahead. Saw the descendants of these Jews and says they were ne Negroes. They were what? He, he couldn't even get it. He couldn't even get it. He they, startled it. He said he couldn't believe what he was reading. They were Negroes. He said, yeah. The descendants of the Jews. You, <laughs> the yeah, he put an O there. That's why. <laughs> the, the, it says Negroid. Or oh, Negroid. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. They were descendants of the Negroid. Mm -hmm. Jews is black over there in 1850 in Jamaica. They still are. We went over there. The, the Eastern Jews who settled in Austria. That's all, that's all I want. Oh, they're black. Just they're, they're black, too. Yeah. Go ahead. You can read that one. The Eastern Jews who settled in Austria, Poland, and Russia were Negroid, too. They're black also. Those, and those, brother, those brothers over there were, were threatened by Hitler to, to be um, subject to um, eugenics programs over there. And Margaret Singer bought it from them and bought it over here, and it became Planned Parenthood over here. Mm -hmm. All right? Which is a shit they won't tell you that. And you that's know what's heavy about that, Deacon? Yeah. You got dumb Negroes now trying to say that the people in the Caribbean are not Israelites. They're questioning the 12 tribes chart, okay? Questioning. And not just crush that questioning that they have. That there's a lot of people, especially um, West people in Jamaica, are questioning. There's a guy on um, 125th Street. I'm not going to say his name because this is going to put a nail in his head <coughs> saying, I want you to prove to me who the Jamaican people are and show me in writings that people call them the Jews. This is your proof. There you go. Okay? So go to 1st Maccabees 348. 1st Maccabees chapter 3 and verse 48. And laid open the book of the Lord, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. So what the Greeks did was the same thing they're doing now. They whitewashed the images. They, they, they took out our images and put their own in our books. Nothing new under the sun. This is iconoclasm in the Bible. Image destruction in the Bible. You saw the Ten Commandments. That's the same thing. Putting their images in our history. The same exact thing. No different. I got to do it. You done jumped on iconoclasm. Uh, what, what do you got? What do you well, got? Isaiah 11. I was going to get to the history now. I would put our iconoclasm. Oh, again, yeah, sure. Put the put the thing I sent you earlier. The 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 picture with the yellow highlight on it. Yes, Isaac Reed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah definitely got to be going there. Iconoclasm. Y'all want to know what this book is about? See this book here. This was a book that is, is entitled the Icon, and it's, it has images of of our foreparents painted all over the walls in Europe. Moses, like the pictures that we just showed earlier, David. Moses, David, Solomon, all that, all that's in these books before the Renaissance period. Renaissance. So you're going to write the pre-Renaissance period. During the Renaissance period, that was when they began to a campaign of whitewashing and destroying the images there. Let's read. Isaac, start it off. Start at the top. Iconoclasm, <laughs> Venetian looting in 1204 and the sack by the Turks in 1453 are well, the main reasons why only very few icons have survived in Constantinople. This is what you call the Dark Ages or the Middle Ages, this part, this period here. Read. It may seem daring, therefore, to write an entire chapter on the icons of the capital. Yet the situation is not quite so hopeless as might appear at first glance. So what he's saying is that it might seem daring to talk about the images that are not tainted because he said there's still some left around. Go ahead. Icons exist, existed not only as panel paintings, but also as frescoes and wall mosaics, some of which have emerged... Some of, some of these frescoes and wall mosaics and paintings have did what? Have emerged from layers of whitewash. From layers of whitewash. Letting you know that the white man is the devil. He's washed the pictures down. That's what, he's, that's what this book is telling you. Negroes, so-called Negroes, know nothing about books like this. You hear me? Go ahead, to do what? To, Read? To give an undiluted impression about... So these pictures that have not been whitewashed gives you an undiluted impression 
of the highest achievement of Constantinopolitan art, meaning that art that's over there in Rome, in Italy. Y'all understand? Because we ruled all of that during the Dark Ages, so you can understand. That's what, that's what the Renaissance was about, the rebirth of white rule. Now, right, I've got the, got the pictures. Now I gotta, I gotta show it to him. Oh, Lord have mercy. I'm going. I'm just gonna take a brief moment to show you how the white man is the devil. And then I'm, then maybe if time permits, we're gonna read out the Bible that he's the devil. But I'm gonna show you the devil's works. We're gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate out of the books that the white man written, that the white man has, not Negroes, that he has recorded layers of whitewash. What I'm about to show you, I'm going to show you a picture that was taken several different times, and you're going to see the stages of whitewashing. That's going to blow your socks off, ain't it? Y'all ready for this? <sighs> this book was written by a, a, a scholar from Switzerland, Gabriel Sez Rajna. Okay, and he recorded in the forewords that certain prejudices have led to the whitewashing of the images. So now what you're looking at, you think, right, this is Moses, right, hold it still, let the people see it. This is Moses, if you can see the scene, Moses, that's the army, Pharaoh's army behind him. Y'all see that? And then the next scene is Moses and the, and the army drowned in the Red Sea. Can y'all see that? You see the big figures in the picture? The big figures. Both, Moses, both of them are Moses. They're showing you different scenes of Moses. That's how they did it. One scene is, is Moses, she got the staff in his hand. Mm -hmm. See the stick? Can y'all see this? Yes, then the next one, they're showing another scene of Moses casting the stick and causing the sea to close up and kill the same Egyptians that's chasing us. Okay? Now move to the other picture. Okay? This is Moses again. You see that? Coming out of Egypt. So now why am I showing you this? Give me the book back. Y'all got that, all right? Now, this was painted on the wall in Upper Syria during Europus. Now, I'm going to find another scene for you. Come back. I ain't done yet. Take this. Show this to him. This is what I wanted to show you. This right here is Ezekiel and the Valley of the Dry Bones. This is also in the same area, in the, in the, in the synagogue of Dura Europus in Upper Syria. And this was painted during the third century AD. That's how old this picture is. Can y'all see that? Now, if you're looking at the picture, keep these images. I need it sharp so the people can remember what they see. Because when I show different books, they're going to have to remember what they just saw. This right here is, you see what my finger is right there? That's the valley. That's the reason why you see that opening, that, that dark opening. Y'all understand me? Mm -hmm. That represents the valley. Now, y'all really can't see the detail of this because this has been whitewashed. So you can understand. The, the next scene is Ezekiel being carried in the spirit. That's what this is. The hand of God above him when it said that he carried me away in the spirit. And you see down at the bottom, those are the bones that was thrown all in the valley. Do you see heads here? If you come over to the other side, you see heads, arms. You see these things here? Now on the other page, come on on the other side. These are the Israelites. This is Ezekiel. There's Ezekiel again with the dry bones coming back as Israelites. That's what you're looking at here. Can y'all see this? Now, it's washed, it's washed out, right? Now, watch this. Hey, they got it now. The same picture. This was, this, even this is whitewashed. But you can see that they had to come back and do it to completely destroy it with the first picture that I showed you. You see Ezekiel over there with the Israelites coming back? And then you look on this side, you see the valley. Now you can see the picture, the parts clear. Get it where you see the bones and see the, the heads and all that? This is, this is one layer of whitewash. This is one layer of whitewash. The picture that I showed you previously was a second layer of whitewash. Okay? Now, let's get the words on here where it tells you where these pictures are. Let them read it. Y'all bear with me? Y'all all right? Fresco showing the vision of the dry bones 
in the synagogue of what? Dura Europus, 3rd century A.D. Now move around on that picture to let them see, because this is what y'all just saw earlier. See the Israelites. So they washed them down, these damn demons. They was right, but they, but I ain't, you ain't seen nothing yet. They washed them down. Y'all saw the final de destruction, like what we read out of that, where it says layers of whitewash. Move it to the other side. Okay, that's the valley again. So you got, you got more details. See all the heads and the legs and all that? That's Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. Y'all all right? Can y'all see this? Yes. I know y'all shocked, but this is out of Dura Europus, 3rd century A.D. Now, let me show you what the pictures are really supposed to look like. From Dura Europus. Now, they didn't... This is, now, this is, a, this is a photograph of the Israelite priests on the walls of the same place. Get the writing at the bottom so you'll know that it's in the same place. Priests on a fresco at Dura Europa's 3rd century A.D. So here's what I want to ask the class. This painting and the other paintings are in the same room. You follow me? So let's read the writing now. Go up into the writing. Thus the Israelite priests dressed in what? Move it over. White, White linen. linen. Let's get a look at them. Now let's get the priests. You see the color of them? That's the color that the other pictures are supposed to be. Look at the feet and the legs. Look at the hands. Black. That's the color that all those pictures that we just saw. That's the way they're supposed to all look like this, because they're all in the same place. Where is these pictures at? Dura Europus. Show them, the, show them the words again. Dura Europus, 3rd century A.D., so it's in the same place. Mm -hmm. High in the hell is one of our pictures, totally whitewashed, and these are not. And it's all talking about the Israelites. Ezekiel was a Levite priest. Yep. Right. We're reading the priests here. So why in the world did they lighten up Ezekiel and left these brothers black? Because Negroes don't study. That's why. That's the problem. So now, I just needed to drop that bomb. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Okay. Was Isaiah 1111? You okay, Ithan? Yeah, man. That was good. All right. All praises. Content. Isaiah 1111? <laughs> the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, mm -hmm. which shall be left from Assyria. Assyria is Kurdistan today. And from Egypt. Egypt. We was in Egypt. And from Pathros. Uh, Egypt is lower Egypt. Pathros is upper Egypt. Go ahead. And from Kush. Ethiopia. And from Elam. Iran, East India. And from Shinar. Iraq, Mesopotamia. And from Hamath. Central Syria. And from the islands of the sea. In other areas. So Israel is in Egypt. You want to keep, keep that in mind. Keep Egypt, Pathos, and Cush in mind. All right? Now, let's get uh, Jeremiah 44, verse 1. Jeremiah 44, verse 1. Jeremiah 44, verse 1. Because Israel had, Israel had, remember, Egypt was neighboring Israel. So whenever an um, empire would rise, Assyria, Babylon... Persia, Greece, Rome, Israel would flee into those areas of Egypt. You always ended up in Egypt, which is right next to Israel. It's right there. It borders. Read. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the Jews which dwell in the land of Egypt, yeah. which dwell at Migdal and at Tahaphanes and at Naph and in the country of Pathro, saying. Upper Egypt. So Israel, Jeremiah went to Upper Egypt to teach the people, to teach Israel and Egypt, period. You understand that? You see that? So the Lord said he will recover his people from those areas even up until now. Those were still over there in those areas. Remnants of us. Get um, 2 Maccabees 1 and 1. So Jeremiah is during Babylonian time. Isaiah was during the Assyrian uprising. Israel's in Egypt. Jeremiah, Israel's in Egypt during Babylon's time. Now we're going to read about the Greeks. 2 Maccabees 1 and 1. 2 Maccabees 1 and 1. The brethren, the Jews that be at Jerusalem and in the land of Judea, wish unto the brethren, the Jews that are throughout Egypt, health and peace. See that? So when during the time of the Greeks, Israel was in Egypt once again. Y'all follow? 
So from Assyria all the way into Greeks, we was in Egypt, and from Greeks to the Romans, in Egypt, and from and afterwards in Egypt and other areas. Y'all follow? Yes, sir. All right. Let's get um, Babylon Timbuktu real quick. It's a page 80, um, Babylon Timbuktu by Rudolf R. Windsor. Mm -hmm. The North African, North African black Jews. He got to put black there because Negroes didn't think it's talking about white folks. So you got to put that redundant term, black Jews, at this time. Okay. And stop at where? I'll let you know. All right. I'm Page 83 from Babylon to Timbuktu. At this time, the Jews would not accept Greek culture. You're in the time of the Maccabees. Go ahead. Nevertheless, Antiochus was determined to Hellenize the Jews. Cause the Jews to follow, accept white supremacy, white culture, assimilate. Go ahead. The army of Antiochus marched into Palestine to support Menelaus, the leader of the pro-Syrian party. As a result, many Jews were killed. Go ahead. Others escaped to the hills and to Egypt. And to where? And to Egypt. Go ahead. Only those Jews that supported Antiochus' policies remained in Jerusalem. Go ahead. An, an, an edict was promulgated interdicting the observance of the holidays, the Sabbath and circumcision. Those laws are forbidden. Go ahead. A statue of Jupiter was erected in the holy temple above the altar. The ab ab abomination of desolation. Go ahead. To this statue, the people brought the sacrifices of pig meat the animal which is an abomination to the Jews. Go ahead. Because of this religious persecution, the legitimate high priest, Onias III, and many other Jews fled into African countries such as Egypt, Ethiopia, and Cyrenaica, Libya. Stop. So you want. So he fled into Egypt, Ethiopia, Cyrenaica, which is the Greek province of Libya. All right? So you want it. So now, let's get this here. The encyclopedia, because, you know, Negroes don't read these kind of books. It's called the Encyclopedia Jewish Diaspora of the Jews in Africa. All right, so you're going to read. This is a Jewish encyclopedia that comes in three volumes. This is volume two. All right? Now, it's called Jewish Diaspora Origins, Experiences, and Culture because, we were, because these apologetics, or pathetics as I call them, were trying to say that Rudolf R. Wins' information is false. It's not true. It's, it's wrong. We, we rely on this book, and therefore it's false. Okay, we're going to read from their scholars then. Maybe they disagree with Windsor. Um, historical overview. According to Jewish biblical tradition, Jews descended from the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, went to Egypt. They were later expelled, passing through the desert on their way back to Palestine, which was periodically occupied by the pharaohs. Survivors of the destruction of the first temp temple by Nebuchadnezzar in 586 BCE founded a Jewish military colony in Elephantine, Egypt. So, so during Babylon's time, we fled to Egypt. Go ahead. In the 4th century BCE, after Alexander the Great's conquest, more extensive Jewish settlement occurred. Read that, read that earlier in 2 Maccabees 1 and 1. Go ahead. He invited Jews to settle in Alexandria, which became a cultural center. The Old Testament was translated into Greek, the Septuagint translation. Mm -hmm. By the 2nd century BCE, Cyrene and Carthage had Jewish settlement. Cyrene, which is Cyrenaica, Libya, and Carthage. That's, that's Tunis. Remember the... Um, the eldest class last week, but that brother was still in slavery in that area of Africa. That was Tunisia. Mm. That's Carthage today. Oh, that was Carthage back then. Tunisia is ancient Carthage. Go ahead. Some Jewish traditions remain in many areas today. During Roman times, Jews were noted as far west as Gibraltar, and they had significant political and economic importance. At times, this led to clashes with their neighbors, as in Alexandria. Jerusalem fell in 70 CE, and zealots fled to Egypt, where they fomented a Jewish revolt, capturing large ports of the countryside, but, but not any urban areas. The Romans suppressed these uprisings. You finished Elephantine Egypt? Elephantine Egypt? Uh, no, I Did you get there yet? I passed that. And you oh, said that's what you go to. All right. Go to Acts 2. Acts 2, almost done. Acts 2. Mm, verse 5. Verse 5. Yeah. Acts 2, verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how here we, every man in our own tongue wherein we were born, mm -hmm. Parthians, Persia, 
and Medes and Elamites. That's Iran or Eastern or India. Go ahead. And the dwellers in Mesopotamia. Iraq. And in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia. Greece. Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt. In Egypt. Go ahead. And in the parts of Libya about Cyrene. Cyrenaica. See that? That's all I want you to get. You read the rest. Read the rest. And strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. That's us also. All Jews about all from all over the place. Now go to Babylon Timbuktu again, page eighty-eight. Page eighty-eight and largest Exodus, the largest Exodus. So Israel fled to this area. This is going into after seventy A.D. Page eighty-eight. The largest exodus to the Jews is right uh, toward the end. Between the second and third centuries, you'll see it. Okay. The largest exodus. I want the to largest know. exodus of the Jews occurred during the persecution by the Arabs led by Muhammad. He had said on his dying bed that he wanted Islam to be supreme throughout all of Arabia. Go ahead. There was a Jewish tribe called Rahab, which crossed the Red Sea and migrated to the extreme point of the western Sudan. Go ahead. At the same time that the Jews were migrating westward across the Sudan from Ethiopia, they also migrated southward from Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, and Morocco to the fertile region between the Senegal and Niger rivers. To the west coast. We went from e Libya, Tunisia, Acts 2, Libya, Tunisia, that's North Africa, Northeast Africa, Carthage, Algeria, which is the same place, a little under um, Tunisia, Morocco, go ahead, north also to the fertile region between Senegal and the Niger rivers. Go ahead. When the Jews from the north and the east met between these two rivers, they established a confluence or crossroad in West Africa. We met up and started working with each other. Go ahead. Where men could exchange their culture, ideas, and merchandise. These Jewish migrations went on with great frequency about 300 A.D., and they continued with the utmost regularity for 1,200 years. Joseph J. Williams points out the course of the Jewish migration from northeastern Africa. He writes that the Jews migrated up the Nile passing Memphis, Elephantine, Kardom, and then they turned west at Kordofan in central Sudan, in the region of the White Nile. Let me say Memphis, Elephantine, Kardom. Remember those words. Go ahead. In the region of the White Nile, Williams thinks some Jews settled in the country of Shalak in the southern Sudan and Uganda. He continues by tracing the migration from Kordofan, going west to Darfar, Lake Chad, Kano, and then to the countries of the Niger River. The original habitation of the Songhe people was Kongia, Kokya, or Kuka. This place was situated in the Dendi country and known as the Dendina lying near the Niger River on the northwestern border of what is now the modern state of Nigeria. Go ahead. Many scholars think that the Songhe people came from Egypt or Ethiopia. Remember Isaiah 11, Egypt, Ethiopia, or Kush. Remember that? Elam, Hamath. Go ahead. Because there, ex there, e there exist many Egyptian culture complexes among them. For example, the preparation of the dead body for burial. Go ahead. Zael Yamini came to Kuka about 300 A.D., an ancient abode of the Songhe tribe. He established a line of kings known as the Za, Ja, or the Dia dynasty. This founder of the first Sudanic dynasty in Western Africa was a black Jew. His name is sometimes written Zaal Ayaman. Joseph J. Williams say that a citizen of Timbuktu named Abder, Abderman S. Sadi wrote 1650 in his book Tarika S. Sudan, History of the Sudan, that Za'al Ayamin was derived from Za Min El Yem Ye Yemen, which means he has come from Yemen. Mm -hmm. Za'el Yemeni came to the Niger country by way of Ragla in central Al Algeria. Rag Wargla was a great trading center of the black Jews. Dr. Barth and Professor Godbe say that Za, the founder of the first Jewish dynasty, established his capital later at Goy on the eastern upper Niger River. See that? So we established a capital in the east upper Niger River. Now, this book is false. Okay. I'm going to read it. Uh, Encyclopedia Jewish Diaspora. It's page 454. Read that. Page 454. Yeah. Migrations into Sub-Saharan. And that 1300s to 1400s CE. You'll see it. Just end there. Migrations into Sub-Saharan Africa. Now remember, Babylon Timbuktu is false. That's a Jewish Diaspora Encyclopedia. Written by people outside of Negroes, apparently. Go ahead. 
In later centuries, Jews are believed to have settled in Western Africa during the... Whoa, 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 whoa. slow down. Well, read it again. In later centuries, Jews are believed to have settled in Western Africa. Go ahead. During the height of the Sangha, Mali, Ghana, and Kanam Bornu empires, according to accounts from explorers of the region, several powerful Jews. According Jew to accounts from explorers of the region. So they saw it. So it's not believed to be its fact. Read the words. Go ahead. Several powerful Jewish families of the Several on several powerful Jewish families. We read about that in here, Babylon Timbuktu, the Songhai Empire, they established these empires and capitals all the way to the upper Niger River. Go ahead. Several powerful Jewish families of the Songhai Empire were of Jewish origin until Eskaya Muhammad came to power and in 1492 decreed that all Jews either convert to Islam or leave the region. That's why in the movie Roots, um, Kunta would say praise to Allah because they forced us either to convert to Islam or be killed or go into slavery. So we either would convert willingly or would convert falsely and still keep Jewish customs in secret and get caught and killed or remain in the land as false Muslims. Go ahead. According to certain records in Timbuktu, an older community... In where? Timbuktu. Mm, go ahead. An older community was formed by a group of Egyptian Jews who traveled by way of the Sahel Corridor. A group of what, Jews? Egyptian Jews. See where Israel always fled to? Go ahead. Who traveled by way of the, of the Sahel Corridor through Chad into Mali. Another where? Chad from where? Through Chad into Mali. West Africa again. Go ahead. Another community was that of the Zuha, Juha, ruler of Kokoi, lo located near the Niger River, whose name is only known as Zuha Alamein. You read that. We just read that in Babylon Timbuktu. Zul Alamea, Ayamayan. Go ahead. Zaal Ayamayan. Go ahead. Or Zuha Min Al Yaman, meaning he comes from Yemen. That's in this book that they say is false. Yep. Go ahead. Exactly right. Local legends state that Zua al Yaman was a member of one of the Jewish colonies transported from Yemen by the Abyssinians in the 6th century e e Ethiopians, it's Abyssinians. Ethiopians. Go ahead. In the 6th century CE, Zua al, -al, -al, -al -Main is said to have traveled into West Africa along with his brother and eventually established a local Jewish community between Mali and northern Nigeria. Some accounts place West African Jewish communities in the Ondu forests of Dahomey, south of Timbuktu. In the 1930s, these groups still maintained a Torah scroll written in Aramaic that had been burned into parchment with a hot iron instead of ink so it could not be changed. It's still there. Go ahead. The decline of the Jewish communities of the West Africa Maghreb most likely began with the influx of Arab invaders into North Africa. Remember, in Babylon Timbuktu said that he was going to force Islam. Muhammad said he vowed to, to he vowed to push Islam, and he did it by the sword. So as Ishmael was pushing pushing from Egypt down, Israel would migrate further west or hide, move further south. When as they were running, they would meet up and establish communities. And some of them would get conquered and converted or conquered and killed and, and sold off. Because remember, the Spanish kicked us out of Spain. We ran back to Africa, and the Muslims are there. So we, 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 we were hiding. We can't know where to go. Because the curse has followed us wherever we ran to. Go ahead. The decline of the Jewish communities of the West Africa Maghreb most likely began with the influx of Arab invaders mm -hmm. into North Africa starting in 640 CE. Remember it said the highest exodus, the largest exodus, based upon the Arab, in Arab invasion. That's the same in Babylon Timbuktu. Go ahead. And later into West Africa in the 1300s and 1400s CE. See that? Middle Ages. It's during the Spanish Inquisition. What time is it now? One more. One more um, gap. You're a Negro land. Get that one. Mm -hmm. hey, and we'll stop and that, it there. That right there, that history just covers you Israelite groups that's mad because we're in Africa raising up the Israelites there. Yeah. You just got historical proof that not only are there, but they're still following the customs of the Israelites mm -hmm. up until now. Yeah. Okay? Because you got a lot of groups that are against us because we're raising up the people over there. And mad. Okay? Read, read that, Cap. Yeah. Bring it out for me. You know, know what to do. Yeah. Negro land, or Negritia, was an archaic term in Euro, 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 European mapping. It's an old term for European mapping. Describing the inland and thinly explored region in West Africa as an area populated with Negro people. As an area what? 
as an area populated with Negro people. Go ahead. This area compromised, comprised, comprised at least the western part of the region called Sudan. Wait, they didn't N catch something. Read that. It says what? Describe describing what? Describing the inland and thinly explored region in West Africa as an area populated with Negro people. Can you tell how the way this is written that he's saying that that something is odd with this, meaning that the Negro people don't belong there? That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. The way it's written, it says populated with Negro people. Like that's something odd. Y'all picked that up? He, no, they He could have just said African. Exactly. Okay, why well, That's the point. That's what, I, that's what I'm trying to get him he to see. He could have just said African. He didn't say, he didn't say, he said populated. In other words, saying like populated with a whole nother group of people. And you know what's heavy? That goes with the Zondervan Bible dic dictionary. Where exactly, it says, that's the point. Not the not Negroes. The Negroes. Mm -hmm. okay. He says, pop, in other words, Ham. in other words, the saying that it's populated with the people that's not from there. That's what he's saying. Right. Go ahead. This area comprised at least the western part of the region called Sudan, not to be confused with the modern country. The term is probably a direct translation of the Arabic term Bilad al-Sudan, meaning the land of the blacks. Or Negro land. That's the Arabic term for Negro land. Okay, Co corresponding to about the same area, there were various kinds of people in the area, including the Jews of Balad el Sudan. Go ahead. Some of the greatest states of those considered part of Negro land were the Bornu Empire. The Bornu em Empire was established by Jewish communities. The Kanem Bornu Empire. I read that earlier. The Kanem Bornu Empire was established by Jewish communities that came out from the east and migrated further south, and from the south further west. That's, that's the reason why he's making the distinction with Negroes being in that area, because right. he's basically saying that these are Jews. Right. Go that's ahead. the point. And the Sokotu Caliphate. Now go up, click on um, Jews of Bildad. Bilad. Let me go, go to Hannibal. Jews, go ahead. Jews of the Bilad al Sudan. Of the land of the blacks. Jews of the land of the blacks. Jews of Negro land. Go ahead describes West African Jewish communities who were connected to known Jewish communities. Stop. It says known Jewish communities. Not maybe, not possibly. It is believed, suspected. It says known Jewish communities. Go ahead. From the Middle East, North Africa, or Spain and Portugal. Why? From the Spanish Inquisition. They fell from Spain and Portugal. King John placed them there or Jamaica. They ran up there. Go ahead. Various pseudo historical records. Stop, stop. Now, let's look, look, look at the word. It's trying to be slick now. Various pseudo, meaning pseudo. false. False, yes. It's, first it says known Jewish communities. Now it says various false historical records. <laughs> no, no, no. You read factual records earlier. Go ahead. That's the same way that the white man does when he says, hold it. That's the same way that the white man does when he says, you look at the picture and you see Christ is black. Then he tells you they almost look black. Right. <laughs> and same kind of stuff. And think about it. It says various pseudo historical records. Who made the fake records? And why? Who would doctor make those records up and make them fake and run? What he's trying to do is put confusion in there. Yeah. Because this is their research. We didn't make fake records and put them there. When do we have a chance to do it? Mm -hmm. So who would do that? Mm -hmm. Leon? Various pseudo-historical records attest to their presence at one time in the Ghana, Mali, and Songhai Empire. That earlier. That's in Belmont Timbuktu and the Jewish Diaspora book. Go ahead. And Songhai Empires, then called the Bilad as Sudan. Then called the land is land is black. Go ahead. From the Arabic meaning land of the blacks. Jews, Jews from Spain, Portugal, and Morocco in later years also formed communities off the coast of Senegal and on the islands of Cape Verde. They are black over there speaking Portuguese. Mm -hmm. Me over there too, go ahead. These communities continue to exist for hundreds of years, but have since disappeared due to the changing social conditions, persecution, migration, and assimilation. Yeah, slavery. Now, I, can't, I cannot leave without this. Go to, um, real quick, let's go to... Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I gotta go, go back to that book again, 455. <coughs> I'll read myself. This is about the second century. This is this is uh, Jews in Africa, same book, Jewish diaspora. By the second century BC, Cyrene, Libya, and Carthage had Jewish settlement. Some Jewish traditions remain in many areas today. Carthage, <coughs> we'll do a Carthage now. Now go we're gonna go to 
I'm gonna go to real quick. Hannibal's picture. Hannibal from Carthage during the Punic Wars. All right. Now, hold on. We're gonna go to Babylon Timbuktu. I'll read it. I'll read it fast. Babylon Timbuktu. This is page 107. All right. Um, it says during the Punic Wars and after North Africa contained a large Hebrew population. This Hebrew population made converts and intermarried with the Canaanites and the Native Africans that were there. But we were the larger in population. So the term given to the North Africans, since we were the majority, fell on us also. We became called Carthaginians. You understand? The original Carthaginians were Tamites. We took that over. I call them. You know, whites are call them. We said, now we take that. Call them as ours now. It was originally theirs. All right? The city, of, the city and language of Hannibal. At the ruins of Carthage, archaeologists have found about 4,000 inscriptions in the ancient language of Canaan. Nahum Slot says these inscriptions date from the time of Nehemiah, Persia, Simon the Just, Maccabees, of Hannibal, and Hasdrubal, as his brother, says Slot. And most viable of all, we have found again the ancient language and writing of Canaan in that land, the rich, idiomatic, idiomatic speech of a city which once counted 700,000 inhabitants. And we, Hebrew writers, we who write and feel in, their, in our biblical tongue have recognized at once that this recalled Phoenician language nothing, is nothing more nor less than Hebrew, a pure Hebrew dialect, nearly the same as was spoken in the country of Israel. They found the language of Israelites in that land. It says, the population of Carthage was derived from Palestine, and its civilization was Hebraic in origin. Um, Slopes is certain after much research that the language Hannibal spoke and in which he directed his troops was Hebrew. There is evidence that the Carthaginians possessed a high priesthood and their ceremonies and sacrifices were similar to the rituals found in the book of Leviticus because Ephraim had their own priests. Um, according, to my, according to some inscriptions, the Hebrew tribes of Asher and Zebulon were in Carthage from the foundation of the city. So they went there along with Ham and they stayed there and then eventually more of, them, more of us migrated over there and took over. At the ruins of Carthage were excavated many inscriptions containing Hebrew names such as Joab, Joes, and Joel. The city of Tunis, or Tunisia, or Carthage today, is said to be neither Arab nor European. Tunis is a Jewish city. Nowhere else does the Jew feel at home as he does in Tunis. So it says to, so beautiful, so beautifully, and indeed Tunis, the inheritor of Hebrew Carthage, is the eternal city of the Jews. Now, um, real quick, I'm gonna get this real fast, then we just think we can stop. It ain't much, I was just gonna show the first Um, yeah, uh, it's called The Story of Civilization, number three, by Will Durant. This section is uh, The Story of Civilization, by Will Durant, the top side goes from Caesar and Christ. It's, around the, it's going into the middle, it's going into all the time leading to Christ. All right, from the Punic Wars and down into Rome and so forth in the Byzantine Empire. This is a three, this is a multi volume book as well. I'm gonna go to page, shout out to Officer Ezra for giving me this book, man, all praises, thank you. Um, page 41, gonna <coughs> give me some gold here. Page 41 is called Hannibal Against Rome. It says the Carthaginians were Semites, akin in blood and features to the ancient Jews. Read again. Read again. The Carthaginians were Semites. The Carthaginians were the people of Shem, so you can understand. Were Semites. Akin in blood. Akin blood related. And features. And features. To the ancient Jews. To the ancient Jews. Their language now and then struck a Hebraic note as when it called the chief magistrates Shafets, the Hebrew Shafetim or judges. The men grew beards but usually shaved the upper lip with bronze razors. Most of them wore a fez or turban, shoes or sandals, and a long goose loose gown. But the upper classes adopted the Greek style of dress, <coughs> dyed their robes of purple, and fringed them with glass beads. Damn. So they assimilated themselves, but they still maintained Israelite customs right. while under the Greek fashions. You follow? Right. <laughs> Show them the handle, please. Oh, Lord have mercy. Uh -oh. Give them the pictures. First of all, before you do it, let me tell you where these pictures are. Before you do it to them, before you give them a heart attack and make them fall out the chair, 
before the, the underwear get totally ripped up. I know they already. <clears throat> the information that we are about to show on the screen comes from the book entitled The Image of the Black in Western Art. Who put this book out? Let's find out. Let's get the writing. Do you see what I'm looking for? What am I looking for? Distributed what a, by Harvard University Press, Cambridge. That's it. That's what I'm talking about. Distributed by who? Harvard. You can't get no better than that. Okay, we got books from Oxford University too. And Yale. You can't, and Yale. I got Yale here. <laughs> okay, so don't mess with us. Now, <clears throat> show them what's in the book. Let me show in the book first, then when we put it on the screen, you'll know that it's from the same book. Here we go. So they, they can see the pictures. These are the coins minted of Hannibal. Now, that's the reverse side of the coin, the elephants. elephants. And cross the elephants. Okay, so y'all know about that? You want to speak on that? Yeah. Tell them about that. When he conquered um, Sicily, he had crossed the Alps. and didn't expect him to do it. He was a, a master strategist of war. And many of the Edomite militaries today base their war tactics off of him. He also, I've also read somewhere that the um, Spartans in him um, shared war tactics together. Anyways, he crossed the Alps of, of, of elephants. And so when he conquered, he invented coins of his face and elephants on the back of the coin. Now, get the words. It's the next slide. There it is. <laughs> the Chuskin coins. Um, head of a black mahout, uh, bronze diems, British Museum elephant, British Museum. Right. The, the, they're telling you that the back side of the coin has an elephant on it. That's right. what they're saying. Observe the head of the black mahout, and on the reverse side is the elephant. So who are we looking at? Hannibal. That's what that was. Mm -hmm. That's Hannibal's picture. All right. So let's um, try to get around that one. So I have to end it on this. I got to end it, but I got way more to go. We got more bombs. Show the books. Show the books. Save them. Save them. Um, and the books. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna keep them. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be that sometime in uh, so the clock. Yeah, we'll fall back. All right, so next time I come up, uh, those who I teach again, I will continue where we left off. Let's wait till they retire. All right. All this is in the Twitch. Well, all this that. information we have is in the Torch Chives video also. All this information, these sources we have, right. a lot of it is in the Torch Chives video breakdown as well. You we can always watch that as, you know, we have time. Now, the people that is trying to help us is calling themselves apologetics. <laughs> they picked the right name because they're going to have to apologize to us. <laughs> okay? Because we just showed that those apologetics are so pathetic, they're going to have to apologize. They ain't seen nothing yet. Okay, I've not seen nothing yet. Shalom, this is I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again... Please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.